hair and scalp examination. Mike from Bay Meadows. I finally found the most experienced company who could restore my hair. Now I have hair where I had none before. Results guaranteed. Diane from Ponte Vedra. Now I have what lotions couldn't give me. Thick, beautiful hair. Find out why you're losing your hair and how to grow your hair back. Call 904-777-IHRS for a limited time free hair and scalp examination. Now my hair will grow for the rest of my life. Thanks, IHRS. Thank you, IHRS. Thanks, IHRS, for giving me my hair back. Hurry, this free examination, normally $199, is yours for free and good only through Sunday. For your free examination, call IHRS at 904-777-IHRS. That's 904-777-4477. Call now. What's the fastest way to get behind the wheel of a 2020 Toyota? Toyota rent a car from my friends over at Arlington Toyota. The 2020 models are now arriving at Arlington Toyota, and Toyota rent a car is the best way to try it before you buy it. Got a road trip coming up, a long weekend with the girls, or a football getaway maybe? Toyota Rent-A-Car at Arlington Toyota's got you covered with an amazing selection of 2020 Toyotas that are road and rental ready. Everything about renting a Toyota from Arlington Toyota is easy. They've got amazing 2020 models, simple online reservations, and staff that's always eager to help. Gotta tell you, the hardest part's gonna be when it's time to turn your rental back in. These 2020s are sweet. Toyota Rent a Car from Arlington Toyota is ready to put you behind the wheel of a 2020 Toyota for your next adventure. Just visit ArlingtonToyota.com. That's ArlingtonToyota.com and get your online reservation started today. Si, si. Very intrigued by the Dan Levatar show on ESPN Radio. How have binoculars mm. and just the general discomfort that comes with using binoculars, how have we not improved that? The Dan Levatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. Now, back to Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 and ESPN690.com. How fun has this Gardner Minshew stuff been? I mean, we haven't seen anything like it ever before in Jacksonville. We really haven't. 25 seasons of Jacksonville Jaguars football and asked some of the folks prior. Now, listen, you had 96, and 96 was unbelievable. And, I, and listen, I wasn't here, but I've heard enough about it, and I can tell you about it. And I, I get the feeling, I know enough about it, that it was just so special the city came to life. And there were other times in 97 through 99, and obviously the 99 season, the place was nuts and 14 and two in the regular season and thought going to the Super Bowl, all those things. And then even more recently, we've had 2017. We've had some special players, Fred Taylor and obviously Tony Baselli, but electric players on the ground with Taylor and Maurice Jones-Drew and Jimmy Smith, who by the way, is from right up the road, 20 minutes from here in Jackson, Mississippi. But we've never seen anything like this in Jacksonville and quite frankly you don't see this in the NFL very often this hashtag Minshew mania has run wild it started at Washington State last year it really started here several years ago when uh, Gardner Minshew graduated or was playing football for Brandon High School but you just don't get it uh, it reminds me of course of Flutie uh, Doug Flutie that's what I always say I think it would remind people of the Tebow mania stuff for a little bit there uh, on a different level, but at least it's, it's, it's reminiscent of that. And Austin, as we welcome you back in from back in Jacksonville, as we're here at Brandon High School in Gardner Minshew's hometown, it's just hard to kind of put into words from an NFL standpoint what this is like. It, it has a very unique feel to it. Yeah, you know, um, it's got a feel for a couple different reasons. Like, obviously, number one is the fact that he's a six-round pick, and he seems to be doing pretty well, right? And, like, we can, c can compare that to Dak Prescott a little, little bit. Obviously, Tom Brady. But, like, with Tom Brady, you know, I mean, everything was kind of in place for him, right? Like, Drew Bledsoe was kind of on the back nine of his career already. We kind of figured that eventually, you know, Drew is going to hand over the reins. I mean, with this situation where Nick Foles comes to town and, you know, he's, he's like the, the $88 million man. You know, everyone's excited for Nick Foles, super, uh, former Super Bowl MVP. And then he goes down on the first touchdown drive. And it's like, it's the most heartbreaking thing ever because you see what could be, you know, you saw a perfect pass from Nick Foles, just dropping dimes. And all of a sudden he goes down and now he's out uh, for an extended period of time. So, you know, it's the storyline Then of course it's the personality as well. We have a guy in Gardner Minshew who not only backs it up on the field, but he's like this 
larger than life character off the field and and i say character loosely because this isn't really a character in the fact that he's portraying something that he's not this is just who he is and the fact that he's so nonchalant and almost doesn't care you know he almost has like a nihilist approach to it uh makes it even better so i feel like fans can really gravitate towards that a lot and like you said i mean i, I can't really recall a time where i've seen something of this magnitude especially in jacksonville yeah nice job by the way coos on the video stream as it's up and running we appreciate you guys working on it i know there's some things going wrong and it might even be a little bit of a sync issue but at least you can see some video and we'll catch up on that part of it you can hear the show you can see some if you want to see it and uh love the minch uh, on the screen uh, good job by coos so i know our guys are working pretty hard uh back there Stuart weber's here with me uh in brandon mississippi and He's working hard, too. We're doing some TV stuff for CBS 47 and Fox 30. Soon enough, you'll see the cheerleaders are out here. We've got uh, kind of having a fun Minshew party in Brandon, Mississippi. I think I told you a little earlier, some of the players, as they were coming on the field, they knew what we were here for. They were chanting his name and yelling his name. I mean, he's kind of got folk hero status all around the country and especially here back home. Uh, but I think there's a big part of this, two reasons why he's got it back here. Austin, and that is one, the chip on everybody's shoulder that he was overlooked coming out of school. And the other part is very nice family, very nice guy, good guy. I yeah. mean, haven't found anybody. I mean, I'm trying to dig up dirt here, man, just like I did on you. I'm trying to dig up dirt, <laughs> and it's hard to find on Gardner Minshew right now. Yeah, you know, and everyone loves that underdog story, right? Everyone can relate to a guy who didn't get a fair shake out of high school. Whatever the case, if he was too small, if he played at like a smaller school, kind of like I did when I was trying to go to Wisconsin. I mean, there, there's different reasons why someone doesn't get, you know, like the four or five star status. They don't get the four or five star treatment. You know, so anytime a kid can slip through the cracks, whether it's from high school to college or even college to the pros, you know, people immediately root for that kid because he's not supposed to be there in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's part of it. And he's really not supposed to be a starting quarterback in the NFL in his rookie season as a sixth round draft pick. He's really not supposed to be two and two as a starter, putting up some crazy numbers and some of the efficiency with his quarterback rating. And obviously with the lack of interceptions are up there against some of the great names in the uh, sport of the NFL and especially this recent run on quarterbacks. What is it about him, Austin, that makes this all go, do you think, right now? Uh, you know, we're talking to some of these folks, and when we have them on, I'm going to ask them that a little bit for, for the football perspective of it. But, you know, we can talk about 6-1. You can talk about lack of arm strength. You can even tell me about the good things like the accuracy and, you know, he's savvy and he's played a lot of football and, and all those things. But what is the separator right now that has allowed him to do this? I tend to believe it's his football IQ. And if you think about it like this, Blake Bortles, who I think was a tremendous athlete on so many levels, he checked all the boxes, right? Six foot five, 240 pounds, but he was admittedly green at knowing the position in the game. And the Jaguars knew that. That's why they wanted to sit him his rookie year, because he didn't have this vast knowledge of the game. And while that sounds a little silly, I think it was true. Uh, they had to teach him the game more. Nathaniel Hackett would say that a bunch when he was the offensive coordinator. What I think we're seeing is the total opposite. The guy that does not check the boxes but has this innate ability to understand the game, the backyard football, the growing up as a kid playing QB, playing right out here at this field. And when you do that, I think that gives you an advantage because amazingly enough, a lot of guys don't have that. You think every quarterback would have that, but a lot of quarterbacks don't. Yeah, I think you have to add that, too, to the fact that he's a very confident individual and his ability is number one. And number two, the guy doesn't get flustered. You know, I mean, we, we've talked about it a lot to an extent on this show where if you go back to the Baltimore game, the very first preseason game uh, this year, you know, in Baltimore, Gardner Minshew took some shots. His helmet came popping off. You know, I mean, it was his welcome to the NFL moment, if you will. And most guys, when they go through that, uh, they throw in the towel, they get gun shy and they get a little nervous. And Minshew took that game. He learned from it. And he came back the next game at home. I think it was against, was it the Eagles? I think, if uh, I'm not mis yeah, I believe it yes, was the Eagles. Yes, yeah. yes, you're right, you're right. So, and then he comes back against the Eagles and, you know, has a pretty good showing at home. So I, I feel like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things you can attribute to his success. But I think the biggest thing, whether it's in the preseason, whether it's been the games that we've seen so far during the regular season, it's the fact that he's never out. You know, even if he turns the ball over, I think he still has that belief like, all right, maybe I made a mistake here. Maybe I should have threw the ball away. Whatever it is, 
the fact that he always has the belief that he can still drive down there and win ball games, uh, that goes a long way, especially for being a rookie. Yeah, here's the other thing. I think we have to start wondering and asking, uh, and I thought of this coming over. Had a nice drive, by the way, nine-hour drive to get over here. So I uh, had plenty of time to think about some things. Okay. And uh, one of the things you think about is, to me, this feels very short-term still. And I don't know if that's fair to Gardner Minshew or not. It's just kind of how I'm thinking. And I don't know how you're thinking when it comes to this, Austin. But he's here until November 17th in this role. That's his job. His job is to win as many football games as possible. If he makes it a tough decision on the coaching staff, if he rides this momentum and they say, whoa, we're not making a change, ah, you know what, that will be a conversation everybody will have, and it can be debatable, and it might be the wrong decision, it might be the right decision. But one thing we really haven't said is this guy, and this is, by the way, the way they feel around here, could this guy just be starting a 10, 12, 15-year career as a franchise quarterback here in Jacksonville and in the NFL? That's something I haven't really allowed my mind to think of because we're kind of living in the moment, and it's probably a shade too early for all of that. Yeah. But when you do that for five weeks now and you do what he's been able to do, there's some evidence that we came on TV last night in Jags Report Live and all this stuff. You can talk Minshew Mania and Minshew Magic, but now it's about time to admit he's a really good football player. And hmm. so do you start thinking, whoa, okay, this could be a franchise guy for years to come. I mean, you absolutely have to think that. But at the same time, if if you're an NFL franchise, yes, you plan for the future, but you also plan for the right now, you know? And it's all going to come down to how successful the Jaguars are in the next four or five games because that's going to dictate um, if Gardner Minshew will still be in there when Nick Foles comes back. I think if the Jags are on, like, a four-game winning streak, then, of course, you have to ride the hot hand, and then you have something for the future. Um, if, you know, if they're still on kind of a skid, if they lose, like, maybe their last two, well, then, of course, I think Folds has got to come back in there because, you know, you're not winning ball games, And, and that's what it comes down to. Like, yes, you, you definitely have a piece for the future, um, and that's good. But you have to ask yourself, I mean, the future is great, but if you don't win games in the present, <laughs> if you're a coach, if you're a GM, if you're whoever, you, you may not be here. So I understand what you're saying for planning for the future and having a, a gem in the future, but they have to win games right now as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Hey, we've got uh, uh, a lot of guests, some a big crowd starting to gather around. We'll show you those folks and the folks here at Brandon High School and how proud they are of Gardner Minshew. And, of course, we'll talk more Gardner Minshew. The, the dirt digging begins, Austin, right after this. All right. As we get the high school principal from Brandon High School on. It's not just football stuff. We've got to find out a little bit more about Gardner Minshew. And we're going deep here in Brandon, Mississippi, when we come back. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. You can check us out on your radio, on the stream, ESPN690.com, and check out this beautiful facility here in Brandon, Mississippi, on all the social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, all the rest of them. We're back live from Brandon, Mississippi, right after this on ESPN 690. ESPN 690, Sports Interrupted. I'm Jake Mitchell. There's a lot to unpack after a tough loss to the Carolina Panthers yesterday. For instance, Jalen Ramsey still out of action and was in Houston to see a back specialist to attend to a nagging injury. Meanwhile, he was photographed with Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson last night. More bad news after yesterday's game. Starting tight end James O'Shaughnessy suffered a season-ending knee injury during the game. Here's head coach Doug Marone with his thoughts on how the team performed. We've got to coach better. We've got to play better You know, on the performance end of it and put our guys in a better position. But when you give up that much rushing and and you give up, you know, your minus three in turnovers, you're, you're not going to win football games. I mean, that's basically what it comes down to. Stay connected with ESPN 690 while you're at work by listening on ESPN690.com. The best kept secret in tires is tiresoutlet.com. Tire Outlet offers wholesale prices with premium service, and tireoutlet.com always has a safety first focus. Locations throughout the first coast, there's no need to go anywhere else for tires and service. Trust, tradition, and quality. A winning combination to feel good about your home. Sometimes it's just that time to replace your roof. Or maybe you need to fix your roof after a recent storm. Hey everybody, it's Brent Martin of Action Sports Jacks. And there are so many roofing companies in the area. But which one can you trust? Let me tell you about my friends at Jack C. Wilson Roofing Company. Trust a family-owned business with owners that grew up right here in Jacksonville. Talk to the owners directly, get free estimates, and you can trust Jack C. Wilson Roofing to walk you through each step of the process. Tradition? Jack C. Wilson is a name you know. The longest standing roofing company in Northeast Florida. They have been repairing and replacing asphalt shingle roofs since 1946. How about quality? 
a roof you will tell your neighbors about. Quality from start to finish, shingle by shingle. You can request a free estimate at jackcwilsonroofing.com. It's the first name in Jacksonville Roofing. And make sure you let them know Brett Martineau sent you. Pop quiz. If you sell a home for $500,000, how much would a traditional real estate agent charge in commission? If you guessed twenty-five dollars to $30,000, you're right. But if you think that's the only way, you're wrong. This is why thousands of homeowners are making the switch to Rex. With Rex, you get a dedicated agent and a full-service experience at a fraction of the cost. Rex uses game-changing technology to cut out the middleman and save homeowners tens of thousands of dollars in fees. See if you qualify by calling 833-REX-HOME. Remember, this is your home. Why give an insane amount of equity away to an agent? Rex offers the lowest fee in the industry without skimping on service. You'll work with an experienced real estate team with you every step of the way. Get the most out of your home. See if you qualify by calling 833-REX-HOME. 833-REX-HOME. Florida, CQ 1057788. Minimum fee may apply. Not licensed in all 50 states. Visit rexhomes.com to see if Rex is available in your area. Rex fully supports the principles of the Fair Housing Act and Equal Opportunity Act. My part-time service in the Army National Guard makes it possible for me to be more for the community I call home. I'm a better neighbor because my service has taught me how important it is to be a team player. My training helps me in my classes when I give attention to detail to the task at hand. My service in the Army National Guard allows me to keep my country safe from threats. Learn more about how you too can live and serve part-time by visiting NationalGuard.com. Sponsored by the Florida Army National Guard. Aired by the Florida Association of Broadcasters and this station. It's time for another shout out to all the North Florida poker fans. This is Allie McDeal from both Best Bet Card Rooms in Jacksonville and Orange Park. The World Poker Tour returns to Jacksonville and the $5,000 buy-in Best Bet Bounty Scramble kicks off October 11th, featuring a $1 million guaranteed prize pool. Come play with 30 of the most acclaimed celebrities from around the globe. Knock any of them out and receive $2,500 in cash. For more detailed information, visit them on the web at bestbetjacks.com. Best Bet, where anybody can win. It's coming like an avalanche of savings. Rocks, big ones, little ones, all beautiful and all one of a kind. Rocktober. Yes, all of our GIA certified diamonds are on sale for one week only. And only at Beard's Diamonds. Get her the rock she's always wanted. And take an extra 20% off Beard's Diamonds' already unbeatable prices. Rocktober. It's your chance to buy like the dealers buy. Choose from half carat to 10 carat at prices never before seen. Beard's Diamonds. Rocktober for one week only, October 14th through the 20th. Choose from North Florida's largest inventory at the lowest prices. Browns, ovals, princess cuts, pear shapes, cushion cuts, even fancy yellow diamonds. All GIA certified and on sale. Now's the time to get a bigger, better rock. Rocktober for one week only, October 14th through the 20th, and only at Beards Diamonds. Where exceptional is affordable. In the St. John's Town Center and at BeardsDiamonds.com. Golick and Wingo. I think my jersey was one of the top selling jerseys around the world and I didn't make a dollar from it but nor did I want to. I respect Tim Tebow. I respect his opinion. I love his passion. I just could not disagree with it more. Golick and Wingo weekdays at 6 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN 2. Brent Martineau. You see him every day on CBS 47, Fox 30, Action Sports Jack. Austin Lane. He's a former Jack star and current MMA fighter. Broadcasting live from the Anna Jar and Levine studio. This is Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 and ESPN690.com. Uh, I'm excited for Gardner. Gardner's a great player, and I'll tell you, uh, Gardner came about a year from just sort of checking out and being a coach. So, so it's really, I think, fulfilling to a lot of us to see Gardner uh, in the NFL. Well, that's Mike Leach, Washington State head football coach, and he uh, joined us a couple of weeks ago when all this Minshew mania started in Jacksonville with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And right now, we are joined by, well, a lot of folks here at Brandon High School. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> we got some cheerleaders here with some mustaches. And we got some folks way back there with some signs and mustaches. And, of course, the football team is trying to get some work in. They've got a big football game on Friday night, so we appreciate uh, all the coaches and the players for letting us hang out on a Tuesday. And this guy is the principal here at Brandon High School, Brian Marshall. Thanks for having us out. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to have you guys. And, uh 
I just uh, proud to see uh, Jacksonville Jaguar folks come to uh, Brandon, Mississippi. It's pretty fun, and you guys have been so hospitable so far. We're going to be here for a couple of days. What is this like for all of you? And I already explained to everybody, you guys kind of experienced this last year, and everybody was doing the homecoming mustaches and everything. But but now it takes on a different level. He's in the NFL. There's nothing bigger than the NFL. Yeah, I don't think anybody uh, – you know, everybody knew Gardner uh, – was good, but uh, no, nobody knew what was going to happen uh, when he left Brandon High School and how successful he was really going to be. And now to see him uh, so successful on the biggest stage uh, there is is really exciting for uh, for our community. How many calls are you getting from knuckleheads like me uh, <laughs> trying to get the latest with with Gardner Minshew and the next story and kind of like what have, what can we tell that nobody's told before from all around the country? I mean, NFL Network was just here last week, yeah. right? Yeah, I think it all started last year with uh, when he was at Washington State and had a lot of success there. Uh, you know, Washington Post and some of those guys uh, calling. Uh, but I tell you, I've, I've probably had, I don't know, eight or ten calls. But uh, Wyatt Rogers, the offensive coordinator here, uh, <laughs> he I think he does an interview about once a day. So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's been kind of interesting. Brent Martineau here, Austin Lane back in the studio. Brian Marshall, the principal here at Brandon High School, the Bulldogs. You can see the dogs everywhere. We're glad to have some of the students out here. I'm assuming most of you guys are seniors. Yeah, some middle mixed. All right. Well, we yeah. appreciate you all coming out. They got a big football game on Friday. It's on the road. Uh, you got a good football team too, yeah. five and two, and then uh, second in the state, I think. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we we've had a lot of success. We coming off of last year, we had some big players uh, graduate, but uh, we've had some kids fill their spots and uh, have had a good season so far. And the quarterback's pretty good going to Mississippi State. Uh, so you know this quarterback thing. Yeah, he, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> you can be nice to him. We, we don't want to give him too big a big head. Hey, Austin, this is very unlike you, by the way. If I had your principal on from high school, the dirt I could find on you is probably unbelievable. Uh, yeah, I think thankfully my principal's not there anymore. Uh, so, yeah, we, we have to keep her quiet, man. <laughs> but, uh, dude, very impressive how you're able to gather everybody up in that picture. It's, it's a great picture coming through right now on, on the social media interwebs, man. Uh, very impressive, Brent. Well, here's the deal when it comes – well, thank you, first of all, Stuart Weber that helped it all out and Brian Marshall helped it all out and the kids for staying around a little sure. bit. I'm sure they got some homework to do or other things, but they're we're hanging out with us anyway. I mean, come on, I know you want to do some more homework, right? <laughs> I mean, look at the signs in the back. we got some good ones. Dude, I mean, this is like college game day. Yeah, it's like before the stash. Version. That's a good sign. I mean, have you guys just already had these signs made or, or you're making new ones? Yeah. <laughs> We've had a lot of it, uh, you know. Uh, from last year, coming off of that Washington State run, it's been uh, it's been interesting for us. And of course, uh, all the media outlets that are wanting uh, pictures of Gardner, you know, and so uh, n- they don't realize that there weren't any of him in high school with a mustache. Yeah. That all started at Washington <laughs> State. So uh, he was baby faced in high school. So I see the one back there before the stash. Uh, those are all the pictures of him in high school without a mustache. It's it, kind of interesting to see him now without it. it it's pretty incredible, the, the look, right? I yeah. mean, that's, I'm not sure if that's a cool look in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Rogers is going to tell you, if you talk to him today, uh, one of the first things he did when he saw it, he called, he called Gardner and said, man, you got to cut that thing off. He said, that's horrible. And uh, Gardner said, no, I, I'm kind of stuck with it now, so. Uh, and he's been stuck with it ever since, honestly. I told Austin back in the when we started this show back in January, we should have just grew mustaches. <laughs> and if it, we knew it would be this successful just because of a mustache, uh, well, not just because. There's a lot of other things that go in it. But the mustache, that would have been pretty good. Yeah, check There's this a mustache. thing out. What do you got right here? That's a good stash. Come, in, come on, get in here. <laughs> Who's this guy? Uh, Trey? This is Trey. He's one of our pitchers on the baseball team. but. Not- he, he's uh he's formidable for his uh his mustache look. <laughs> so you got the thing going. Are there people commenting around town? Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to talk up a little bit into this. There you oh, go. Yeah. yeah, good. Okay, good. Yeah, we don't have a third mic for you. I didn't, didn't expect another <laughs> guest, but you don't need a razor here in Brandon, no, right? No. I mean, poor Gillette. I mean, the, their sales are way down across the country ever since Gardner Minshew uh, took over. All right, what was he like as a high school kid? You were an assistant principal at the yeah. time. Yeah, I was uh, I was assistant principal here. Uh, he was a, absolutely a, a fantastic kid, uh, one of those kids that you want your daughter to date, uh, honestly. Uh, you know, somebody asked me some, give some antics on Gardner, and, and the, there really aren't very many antics from high school. He was, he was a great kid and uh, worked hard in the classroom and worked extremely hard off the field, uh, off the, um, out of the classroom on the field, uh, studying film, and, uh, and really wanted to be uh, the best he could be, both academically and athletically. You know, there is a lot of talk about that. In fact, Josh Dobbs is now the backup quarterback, and he's like, what is he, Austin, uh, aeronautical, aeronautical engineering? Aerospace or engineer. Aerospace engineering. Yeah. I can't even say it. Yeah. Forget about trying to right. study it. It is an awful. Uh, I'm just a dumb sports guy. But 
there's so much talk. Like he's a smart guy. Yeah. The Wonder Lick he did really well on, uh, right. and uh, obviously Gardner is a smart guy. But he even said in the media, he said, "Listen, I belong with you guys in communications. I can't compete with the the aerospace engineering stuff." But he's obviously a pretty good student. Yeah, absolutely good student. Uh, he he uh, he spent so much time preparing for whether it was a test or whether it was an actual football game. Whatever it was, he was going to be prepared. He's one of those guys that can't go into something unprepared, uh, which, uh, you know, I think that's his success. I think that's what's made him so successful. Um, he is going to be the most studied quarterback in the NFL, uh, and that, that, that says something. He's going to be able to read those defenses and see what they've done in the past, and he's going to pick up on it right away. Yeah, and I think that's helped him so much early Absolutely. on. I mean, it can be a fast game. It looks pretty slow right now for Gardner Minshew for the most part, which is really cool. Tell us a little bit about this town. In your high school, I mean, it's a beautiful facility, what you guys have done here. Uh, but, I mean, it's, it loves its football. But what, what else happens here in Brandon, Mississippi? Uh, we, we are uh, one of the uh, best high schools in the state. I think, we're the, I think we're the fifth largest in the state. We are an A-rated school, which our state rates us state through F. Uh, we're A-rated, uh, highest academic uh, success rates you can have. Uh, and, and we always compete every year for the all-sports awards. So we both academically and athletically um, you know, we have uh, Brio here. We have band. It's a big deal. Brio is our show choir that travels all over the country competing nationally. Uh, our band has started to compete nationally. So a lot of stuff. Our, we've actually got our uh, national championship cheerleaders right now. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we got to give them a little yeah, love. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. now, by the way, was part of your routine wearing the mustaches? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> it didn't happen. No. It's like, hey, what do, do people dress up for Halloween? around here like Gardner? Because oh, yeah. yeah. I know it's going to be a big thing in Northeast Florida. <laughs> well, I, I don't know how many uh, men's shoe jerseys there are in town, but I can tell you there's going to be a lot warm for Halloween. <laughs> no doubt about it. Uh, so fantastic high school. This is where he's from. He didn't play on this field once again. This is a new facility, so he played just down the road right. a little bit, and that's where he kind of made his day on the uh, on, under the Friday night lights and, and where the star was kind of born. But you also have DeMario Davis, who's another guy playing in the NFL, plays for the Saints. I know you're coming over to Jacksonville this yeah. weekend to see this. This is going to be a tough watch for you in terms of the rooting interest. Well, uh, you know, uh, being from Mississippi, you've got uh, people who root for Ole Miss and Mississippi State. There's a lot of shirts out there that are split, you know, Ole Miss and <laughs> yeah, well, Mississippi State. I, I was trying to see if anybody has a jersey split between the Saints and the Jaguars <laughs> uh, that I could put Davis and uh, Minshew on, but, I, you know, nobody has that. But. This is uh, – is this a small town? Because it feels like it's a growing town. I think you're getting your population up around 30,000, and you're just outside of Jackson, right? right, kind of a suburb of Jackson. It's a, it's a growing town. Uh, we, we, when I came here, we had about 1,000 students. We have about 1,700 now. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's, we've been able to keep that small town feel. I think that has a lot to do with our, um, our city officials uh, and, and the school system as well, to keep that small town feel in a, in a city that's growing as fast as we are. What was uh, – anybody know, like, the claim to fame for Brandon, Mississippi, prior to maybe Minshew Mania? Ooh, uh, Jarius Norwood. Yeah. Uh, Jarius played here uh, in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, one of the best running backs we've ever had. Uh, obviously went on to Mississippi State and then played with the Falcons for a little while. Ring that bell, Austin. Ring that Not bell. Another here. Mississippi State <laughs> mention. I should have brought the darn bell with me for I all the Mississippi kidding, State fans here. Uh, you said Norwood, and there's one other. Who was it? What's, who's the other one on the flag yeah, down there? Brian Hudson played here Hudson. Uh, early 90s, I think maybe uh, or late 80s even, uh, and played for the uh, Patriots for a little while. Mm -hmm. So four NFL guys, Austin, you were asking about it earlier. That's pretty good uh, for a town of about 25,000 people. That's very impressive. Yeah, I mean, see, it's funny, though, because I come from a town of 1,300 people, so I hear 25,000 <laughs> people, and I'm like, that's huge. But in perspective, yeah, not that big. <laughs> Right. No, not at all. Uh, hey, do you guys have a chance to, to win big uh, on the football field this year? Is, are there, is there talk yeah, about yes, that? Yes, we do have a chance to win big. We've got to put some things together. We, we've got banged up. We played the uh, first five games. We played three number ones and a, I think a number nine. Uh, so it's, it's been a, a first five games have been really rough. Uh, and then we had two kind of um, uh, games that we could get some players in. And we've healed up a little bit, but we'll see uh, what that does for us this week. We've got a really good test with the pedal this week. i got to believe, uh, and I don't know, this might be a free shout-out to DirecTV, but DirecTV uh, subscribers are probably up so they can get those Jaguars games. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so you want me to tell the story? Yeah, tell about, the story okay, about right. your wife. What, uh, what happened? You were out You were <laughs> yeah. out hunting, weren't you? Yeah, I, well, I was at deer camp getting things ready for the season, and uh, the, uh, the uh, game came on, and, and uh, Nick, uh, 
got hurt there early on, and my wife texts and says, Gardner's in. I said, what do you mean Gardner's in? She said, yeah, Nick Foles got hurt, Gardner's in. I was like, oh, wow. So, of course, I immediately stopped what I was doing, went back to the camp, tried to watch the game. And uh, she's at the house, and she's trying to find the game. And she's like, how do I watch it? And I'm like, I don't think you can. <laughs> well, 70-something dollars later, she found a way to watch the game uh, that day and got to see Garner play that first game. Yeah, and that's what everybody's trying to do around here, Austin, man. They're pretty proud of Gardner Minshew, as they should be. Uh, he's an alum of Brandon High School. And, hey, you know, you hope he makes it real big so he can at least send a check someday back here. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just hope he does well, <laughs> whether a check or not. I hope. I hope the best for Gardner and his family. He's such a great kid and did such a good, good job for us. I'm such a good student. We're just happy for him. Brian Marshall, the principal here at Brandon High School, you've been awesome to us uh, in just short order. We appreciate you, you taking the time and, and sharing some stories. And, really, you helped get all these folks together. we got to make a lot of noise as we go to break or something, right? Can you guys do that? You're the state champ. So you'll be able to do that. Thanks to everybody for coming out. You're more than welcome to stay. I mean, we got a three-hour show. But I know you got some homework to do, so you got to go do that as well. We'll be back from Brandon, Mississippi, Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Yeah, we got Minshew Mania, the whole show dedicated to Gardner Minshew. Brent here, Austin Lane back there when we come back. Hey, everybody, this is Brent Martineau from Action Sports Jacks. You hear us daily on ESPN 690 from 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. Make sure to catch Action Sports Jacks primetime every Saturday and Sunday all year long, 1030 on Fox 30 and 1130 on CBS 47. Action Sports Jacks primetime on Saturdays and Sundays the entire year. And always make sure to tune in from 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. with Austin Lane and me on ESPN 690. It's Dollar Down Days at Planet Fitness. Now through October 11th, you can join Planet Fitness for just $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment. So if you really think about it, you have plenty of cardio equipment between your couch cushions and quite a few strength machines in your cup holder. Oh, then there's that free fitness training in your sock drawer. So check every couch, cup holder, and coin purse and join by October 11th for just $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment. Join in club or at planetfitness.com now through October 11th. Planet Fitness Clubs are independently owned and operated. See club for details. Every day, men and women from communities across this nation serve as reserve citizen airmen. I am proud to defend our nation. Proud to be part of a team that helps make a difference. I am proud to be part of something larger than me and to serve my country. We celebrate those who have served and those who are proudly serving in the Air Force Reserve. Our mission is to fly, fight, and win in air, space, and cyberspace. I'm proud to be a member. I'm proud to protect our... Proud to serve in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. Say hello to your new secret advertising weapon, your own branded mobile phone number. Star Star Mobile provisions vanity mobile numbers prefixed by Star Star. Providing audiences an easy way to reach your business. Give it a try now by dialing Star Star Mobile from your mobile phone. That's Star Star Mobile. When prospective customers see your offline or online ad and they dial your branded Star Star Mobile number, Star Star Mobile helps to convert them through text, voice, and online communications. Give it a try now by dialing Star Star Mobile from your mobile phone. That's Star Star Mobile. Attention men and women. If you'd like to get your hair back, then you need to listen to some of our clients. John in Orange Park. IHRS showed me what was causing my hair loss and helped stop it. Call IHRS now at 904-777-IHRS. Find out how to grow your hair back with a free hair and scalp examination. Mike from Bay Meadows. I finally found the most experienced company who could restore my hair. Now I have hair where I had none before. Results guaranteed. Diane from Ponte Vedra. Now I have what lotions couldn't give me. Thick, beautiful hair. Find out why you're losing your hair and how to grow your hair back. Call 904-777-IHRS for a limited time free hair and scalp examination. Now my hair will grow for the rest of my life. Thanks, IHRS. Thank you, IHRS. Thanks, IHRS, for giving me my hair back. Hurry, this free examination, normally $199, is yours for free and good only through Sunday. For your free examination, call IHRS at 904-777-IHRS. That's 904-777-4477. Call now. Locally owned and operated businesses give our community character by offering unique options for shopping and dining. They are a big part of what makes living in the 904 so great. Shop the 904. Powered by Cox Media Group. You know you'd like to add an $80 gift card to your wallet. Well, that's exactly what you can get this October at any of Tire Outlet's nine locations. We're here to tell you about the Yokohama Fall Rebate at TireOutlet.com. 
you'll receive up to $80 on a Visa prepaid card or Visa virtual account with your purchase of four select Yokohama tires. The Yokohama Fall Rebate Offer, only this month. See more rebates and info at TireOutlet.com. Wholesale prices, premium service. What's good, Stephen A? If you're a New York Jets fan, let's just say this. Damn, you can't catch a break. I mean, the New York Jets, when's the last time they've been relevant? Catch Stephen A. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. When Gardner first played uh, at Jacksonville, he played better than he first when he first played for us. He, uh, that was, the first half of Wyoming was tough. Second half, he kind of got a rhythm, played well, and then just took off from there. But I think he's going to do great things there at Jacksonville. Or anytime he's on the field, that uh, other people around him play better. Well, that's Mike Leach. That is Mike Leach. Uh, the Washington State coach, when he was on with us, talking about Gardner Minshew a couple of weeks ago. And we've caught up with a lot of people now about Gardner Minshew, and we continue to do so. Brent Morton, along with Austin Lane. Austin Lane back in Jacksonville. I'm here in Brandon, Mississippi. Brandon High School, of course, Gardner Minshew's hometown, his high school, his alma mater, and they're pretty proud of him. Thanks to the cheerleaders and the baseball team for coming out and being a part of our show for a little bit. And uh, now we kind of sent them on our way. We didn't want them to have to stay uh, for all this time. But the football team's practicing behind. We got some Gardner Minshew signs that they left us uh, that we're going to keep up for a bit. And uh, hopefully the wind doesn't blow too much. Hey, look, even a shout out to Big Cat Country on one of the signs. So uh, there you go, guys. Uh, hopefully you like that. And what else is being accomplished here, Austin, is now that we put the signs up, we blocked the football practice a little. And they didn't ask us to, but I was thinking about this. Well, the team they're playing on Friday night is probably trying to watch our show and watch oh, yeah. what's going on back there for a little scouting yeah, report. Yeah, I mean, if they care about winning, they're absolutely doing that. You know, all the greats <laughs> find ways to win, uh, regardless if it's cheating or not. Ask Bill Belichick. So, yeah, I, th- I think it was a good call on your spot to put those signs up a little bit, block the practice, was that, was and don't give the enemy any advantage. The- a little flex? No, I'm just telling it like it is, man. There, there's no flex necessary. I'm just, uh, I'm just calling it like I see him. Well, there's always a flex with Austin. If you aren't cheating, you're not trying. Hey, uh, I got something for you. What's um, up? Give us a quick little update, not Gardner Minshew related, unless he's planning on going to your fight, being in your corner, because it is a bye week. But Ooh, give us a, one a of the call. reasons you're not here is because you're in fight camp. Yeah. And so, uh, really, the reason you're not here during fight camp, so you've got some workouts a couple times a day, and, and uh, uh, we love that. Wish you were here. But yeah. Um, how's it going and what's the latest on the November 9th fight that's coming up? Yeah. Uh, so it's going very well. I mean, obviously, um, haven't taken too many, uh, big hits as I come into work every single day. My face is still intact. So that's a good sign. Uh, training camp is going very well though. They're still actually trying to find me an opponent right now. So that's kind of the biggest thing is I don't have a, an opponent yet. You know, we're still about four and a half weeks, five weeks out. So the, they're going to find somebody. But, um, you know, it's kind of hard not knowing how to game plan yet. So, obviously, I'm just trying to clean up all my techniques and uh, treat it as if I'm going against the best guy in the world. And then when, uh, when it, you know, it comes time to fight, I'll be ready to go. Is that uncommon, man? Is this kind of late in the game? What's uh, the deal? On, the, on, like, the regional scene, it's, you know, it, it's pretty common, to tell you the truth. Um, I don't think they've really announced any of the fights yet. Now, s- some guys have signed contracts and everything of that nature. But for the most part, yeah, when, when you're doing like, like a smaller promotion, that, that's pretty common. Okay, I get it. Uh, so hopefully you'll find out soon enough and you'll find the right person. Nobody wants to fight you. I get it. Oh, well, I mean, I think people want to fight me. They just want to do it for the right price. <laughs> Have you seen this, dude? I'm not, and Would I'm, you want to fight I'm this, I'm not going to pay somebody. Like, I'm not going to throw extra money into the pot to come fight me. So they can figure it out. <laughs> hey, Scott, Scott, I come in every day wanting to fight the guy. Okay, throw that first punch. Let's see how that story Brent ends. wants to do it for free, too. <laughs> no, no, no one's even paying Brent to do that. So, ah, just, yeah. for, just for ratings. <laughs> <laughs> it is all about the ratings. Hey, speaking of, glad to have you, Scott. Thanks for hanging with us. Thanks, guess man. Happy to be guess here. Guess who's not here again? Yeah, you know why Kuz isn't here? Because he's celebrating being number one on that other station he works for right yeah. away. I, I should mention WAPE. And uh, I, I think they're having like a party or something. Do they do this like every month, Austin? And when is our party? I mean, I get it. I need a tattoo once we become number one in the ratings. Yeah. But what about a party just for maybe a little growth here or there? Dude, I don't want a party. I just want a TV up in the city. Like, we're, <laughs> we're a sports radio show, and I can't even watch a little sports when I'm talking about sports, man. So that's all I want right now for, for 
forget about the parties until we're numero uno. I just want a little TV so I can stop after like watching on my cell phone all the time. Uh, hey, how much better can the Jags offense be uh, and get, even yeah. though they've scored 26 and 27 points and Minshew's been good and Fournette's run for a, a couple hundred yard games and he's got 500 yards and DJ Chark's having a breakout season. Uh, where's the growth in their offense, do you think, with Minshew as he gets more experience? Because a lot of the folks here say, hey, you, you keep this in mind. He's just scratching the surface. I mean, he's just getting used to this. So from his perspective, he's got a ceiling to get higher. But I'm talking about the offense in general. Where do you see this thing going? Uh, I see it only getting better. You know, you're starting to have a, a Jaguars offense now that's confident in running the ball. Leonard Fournette's kind of back in his groove and everything like that. You got to be a little nervous in their pass blocking as, you know, they, they gave up a touchdown against Carolina. They gave up a few sacks against Denver. So that does make me a little bit nervous. But as far as the progression, I mean, I think we got we to talk about Josh Oliver a little bit, right? This is a guy uh, who should be back in, if not this weekend, probably in, in the next you know few weeks. And I think with the loss of O'Shaughnessy, which is actually a really big loss now, he was having his best season um, of his career. And you have a guy like Jeff Swaim who, you know, you kind of know what you get with him. Him, they need that pass catching tight end because John D. Filippo likes the pass catching tight end, and it's 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 another tool that you can implement in your offense to make teams kind of worry about, you know. And when we're talking about a rookie tight end, like listen, there's not a lot of first year tight ends in the NFL that have a lot of success, right? But I think what which helps Josh Oliver a lot, as opposed to like a Hawkinson, um, as opposed to a Noah fan, is they don't need Josh Oliver to come out, you know, in goal line and be like the big time blocker. That's not what they're asking him to do. I think when they go two tight end sets with Swayman, and Josh Oliver, Josh Oliver is going to be in the pass game. That's that. That's what his big draw was out of college. And uh, I think as soon as you can add 100 percent healthy Josh Oliver to already very potent offense with a lot of weapons, it's only going to make it that much better. Yeah, and I'm, I'll add this layer to it. OK, you talk about the offensive line and what more they can do to, uh, to shore things up and not give up those sacks, and they can't do that. But it's going to happen time to time. They don't have one of the best off, uh, offensive lines in the NFL. We know that. So that's not fixable. You're not going to become, say, the Dallas Cowboys offensive line or maybe even right now the Indianapolis Colts offensive line. It's just I don't think that happens. You can show some growth because you have a young guy and then you have Cam Robinson coming in and you have some players that haven't worked together a lot. So there's some growth there. I think that can take place. But I just don't think they're going from here to boom, you know, and being one of the best offensive lines in the league. I don't see that. So they can definitely shore that up. But what I feel like they can do is as much as DJ Chark is playing well, can't they do more with D.D. Westbrook? And they tried to last game. It was like 11 targets and seven catches, so I like that. But even Chris Conley has been really quiet. He was a star of camp, man. And when he does make plays and they throw him the football, he makes plays. And they're big yeah. plays, usually late in the games the last couple of weeks. So I see those kind of guys. And then you mentioned Josh Oliver. But I think there's even more to get out of the receiving core Maybe once Minshew gets more of a rapport with some of the other players. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, and with the emergence of Marquise Lee, you know, we're going to see like whose reps get affected a little bit. But DJ Chark seems to be the guy right now, you know, and, and uh, as far as that, Garner Minshew and DJ Chark have a great chemistry. Um, now, with all the whole D.D. Westbrook thing, is it a fact that teams that are game planning for D.D. Westbrook a little bit, especially the first couple games where everyone was talking him up being the one receiver? I think that has something to do with it. But now we have to remember if you're the Saints, if you're the Jets coming up, you know, if, if you're a team that's got in the Jacksonville Jaguars, you have to understand that you can't put all your chips on defense just on D.D. Westbrook because you have DJ Chark who can beat you. You have uh, Chris Conley who can take you over the top. You know, I mean, um, if, if one thing remains to, you know, if, if one thing's for certain, it's the fact that the Jaguars love to throw that goal route to Chris Conley. So teams have to mind that as well, especially their safeties. So I think with what they've seen on film so far and what we've seen on film so far, it's, yes, there, uh, there, there is a lot of possibilities for Chris Conley to get more involved. D.D. Westbrook, you can give him the ball in space a little more and watch what he does, you know. Um, there is a lot of options for that. But we have to remember, there, there's only so many targets you can get for a game, right? And as long as those targets are meaning something, as long as that offense is progressing, as long as they're driving down the field, I don't care who gets all the targets as long as they're moving the ball. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we got more Minshew Mania coming up. I mean, the best one right here, we got to get some tape on it behind me, is before the stash. I mean, that's fantastic. But a uh, little college game day feel. Stuart Weber, he's got the tape. Before we get more of these signs up. What a scene here at Brandon High School, Brandon, Mississippi, hometown of Gardner Minshew. 
More of that on the way. We take one little segment to talk some college football with Jason Fitz on ESPN. That's on the way next. From Jacksonville to Brandon, Mississippi, Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Hey, it's Mike Golick from Golick & Wingo. Thanks for making ESPN 690 the fastest-growing sports station in Jacksonville. Clearly, it's because I'm on every morning from 6 till 10 a.m., but this isn't about me. It's about your business. Get your business noticed today. First Coast is making the switch to ESPN 690, and there's no better time to get on our team than right now. Call ESPN 690 today, 245-8732. That's 245-8732. Grow your business today on the new ESPN 690. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna Jar and Levine Studios. Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 904 600 4000. That's 904 600 4000. ESPN 690. Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio. WOKV Jacksonville. Listen live everywhere you go on ESPN690.com. ESPN 690, a Cox Media Group station. Hey, it's Trey Wingo from Golik and Wingo, and you're listening to ESPN 690. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Christine Lisi. Right now, the Astros will turn to one of their aces as they look to move on to the American League Championship Series. Justin Verlander gets the call on three days rest. Game four of the ALDS against the Rays. Only the second time ever he's starting on short rest. Houston up two games to one. Must put away Tampa Bay in game four. Notes ESPN's Ryan Howard. The faster you can finish it off, you get a little bit more rest. You get a little bit more recuperation. You can have Garrett Cole uh, lined up for game one in the ALCS and have Verlander starting to get his rest so he can slide back into wherever he needs to, where it's possibly game two, game three, whatnot, and, and, and really put yourself back in a position to be able to do some damage in the ALCS. Tampa Bay will have a bullpen game and use Diego Castillo as an opener. Game four coverage, 6.30 Eastern ESPN Radio. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver said today the league's apologetic over the reaction that followed last week's tweet by Rockets GM Daryl Morey supporting anti-government protests in Hong Kong. But Silver said the league is not apologizing for Morey exercising his freedom of expression and won't regulate what players, employees, and team owners say. Right now, Dodge is offering power dollars. Get $10 off for each horsepower of your new car, all the way up to $7,970 off for a Challenger SRT Hellcat Red Eye. Hurry into your local Dodge dealer today. Brent Martineau. You see him every day on CBS 47, Fox 30, Action Sports Jacks. Austin Lane. He's a former Jack star and current MMA fighter. Broadcasting live from the Anna Jar and Levine studio. This is Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 and ESPN690.com. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us on a Tuesday edition of Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. And hey, no surprise, we're on the road once again. One of the things we've done on this show all year long on ESPN 690 is take it on the road from the Senior Bowl where we first saw Gardner Minshew to today where we're in his hometown of Brandon, Mississippi, just outside of Jackson, Mississippi, about three hours north of New Orleans, a couple hours south of Starkville and Mississippi State. So uh, here we are in Mississippi, and, well, we got the signs behind us to prove it. This place loves Gardner Minshew and Minshew Mania is for real. In fact, it started last year when he was getting it done at Washington State. We're going to talk some college football now. Brent Martineau here in Mississippi. Action Sports Jacks Austin Lane back in the studios. And we welcome in ESPN's Jason Fitz for the conversation. What's up, man? How you doing today? I'm doing great. How y'all doing? Hey, we're doing fantastic. We got Minshew Mania uh, going crazy here. And we also have a little bit of gator fever in Northeast Florida after a big win last week over Auburn. Did anything surprise you coming out of that one? Well, I, a lot of that game surprised me. I expected it to be a low-scoring defensive uh, battle, and in some ways it was. I think one of the things that we really learned that we're not talking enough about in, in that game against Auburn specifically is that Bo Nix is not where people want him to be reputation-wise. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I was standing on the sideline watching that thing go down and uh, well, humble brag, and I'll tell you, uh, <laughs> you know, Bo, Bo had a great second half against Oregon, and we turned that into Bo's arrived, but his completion percentage in the first half has been trash in every game so far this season. His completion percentage pushing the ball down the field has not been good at all, and the fact is 
he really gave this game away on three key plays in the second half. He had the, beat, the big, deep pass we were giving him credit for. But if he puts that thing on the mark, it's a touchdown. And instead, the receiver falls down after he has to work too hard for an easy, wide-open catch. And then a couple of plays later, he throws an ill-advised pass into the end zone that gets picked off. That turns out to be a turning point in the game. And then later one, they're on the fringe of field goal range. He runs around in the back trying to do his best Patrick Mahomes. It doesn't work out for him. Takes a huge sack. I mean, those are points lost in a game where points were at a premium. So uh, this, this Florida defense played like they're special. But when you turn the ball over that many times and you still lose, if you're Auburn, you got to look squarely at Bo Nix and say, man, that's the piece that's going to hold them back from being in the national championship conversation this year. And Jason, that's exactly the thing you just mentioned was the turnovers. You know, there was eight total total turnovers in that game. You know, a, a very sloppy game. And this isn't the first game of the season, right? I mean, this is, you know, this is week four, week five, week six. I mean, you're supposed to have all these mistakes out of your system. I mean, were you kind of surprised? Because I feel like every single year, even the good teams, they have those four to five turnover games. I mean, what do you attribute to that? And is that a sign of the things that maybe they're going to have some trouble down the road? Yeah, I think it's going to be a big issue, especially when you look at, at quarterback play even for Florida. And we all love the story of Trask, and rightfully so. It's a great story for people to get behind. But your quarterback can't play scared, and your quarterback also can't play impatient. Those are the two things when you're playing a great defense that seem to happen. One is that you get frustrated by the fact that you're not getting any positive plays, so you push the way you're not supposed to. But then the other part of it is when you are playing scared from the minute you drop back, you're just not – analyzing the field the right way and that's what it looked like i mean uh, when you talk about the florida offense from the moment they drop back the offensive line and the quarterback all looked confused and it looked like they were expecting chaos in front of them so as a result they just didn't handle the moment well and that is surprising to me that's what's leading to turnovers and you know frankly i, I think what we're going to find out on saturday now granted i didn't think florida was going to beat auburn so what do i know but uh, georgia has been absolutely incredible so far this year and they have a quarterback in Jake Fromm that may not be as spectacular as some want him to be, but he knows this moment, knows how to handle this moment. That's going to be the difference in the game to me. The turnovers shouldn't be there for Georgia, and they might be there again for, for Florida. Yeah, and that's a few weeks down the road. Jason Fitz from I'm ESPN. Sorry, a few weeks down the road, yeah. Yeah, Jason Fitz joined us uh, from ESPN. Uh, let me get your impressions. How was the swamp, man? I mean, you guys had your countdown to college game day, and then you, you were there for game day. Uh, what was the sense? The place was rocking. Was I was in Carolina with the Jags, but it looked like it was rocking on Saturday. It was incredible. And, yes, you're right. I shouldn't just jump past LSU this weekend. That's where we'll be for game day, yeah. uh, another big offense they're going to be playing against. But uh, the, the atmosphere in the swamp was really incredible, and I was I was surprised, I'll be honest, because for game day itself, it was one of the more tame crowds we've seen uh, as far as the game day broadcast. And, uh, you know, it was hot outside, obviously, and it was homecoming weekend, so I think people just had a lot more on their minds. So I went into the game not expecting uh, it as sort of – a loud and, and crazy a crowd as we saw. And, and the swamp is special. It's special in its construction. It's special in the way it's built. It's special in the way everybody's playing on top of it, sitting on top of each other. And I was really stunned by uh, the way they come together, some of the traditions, listening to the songs, seeing everybody go with it. There's a momentum to playing in the swamp that is infectious for sure. And, and my first time being in there for a football game, my first time standing on the sideline, uh, for a game there and it, it definitely you know if we've been to texas we've been to nebraska there are nice things about each of them and some I'll, I'll be honest i think texas might have been a little louder but florida had a better special vibe to it if that makes any sense the swamp you can see the magic you can feel it yeah well it's big for them too down there because it, it, there haven't been a lot of big games in the last handful of years in gainesville in the swamp first time game they got there since 2012 and so that kind of shows you they've been out of it a little bit now last year against lsu big crowd so they've had some but this one felt different i mean you talk about two top 10 teams and now the gators are right there in a prime position you know you mentioned georgia and i think it's important to do it because there's two games left on their schedule at least in the immediate that look real daunting and that is lsu saturday night georgia down the road but the win over auburn kept that georgia game very much alive i'm not dismissing saturday night in baton rouge it's a big game for the gators but they almost are allowed a mulligan because it keeps them still in play with one loss in the sec east if they can beat georgia here in jacksonville so if i have to take one of the games if i'm a gator fan i'm going to take the game in jacksonville against georgia because it's an sec east game and it might be the one that gets me to atlanta 
You are a thousand percent correct with that. And I think that, that ultimately Florida will get a mulligan. They're going to be allowed a loss somewhere because the gauntlet of the schedule is so brutal. Some would argue that Auburn's going to be allowed the same thing. By the end of the year, we could look back at the Florida loss for Auburn and say, hey, it's not a bad, that's a great loss. What do we know from the committee? The committee values, uh, they value big wins. They, they are okay with valuable losses. They just won't let you get blown out. You can't get blown out. You can't get beat by a bad team. This is neither of those for Auburn and Florida. So, you know, I, you're ultimately very, very right that Florida has the opportunity. I mean, they, they, if they're going to lay an egg once, they can lay an egg against LSU. They just can't get blown out doing it. That's going to be the biggest concern because this LSU offense is so explosive. But let's be honest, for everybody that turns around and says Florida hasn't faced an offense as dynamic as LSU, you're right. LSU hasn't faced a defense as dynamic as Florida is either. Something's got to give. We'll see how those explosive plays look for LSU that they bank on. Uh, but ultimately, I think even if Florida keeps it close against LSU in the, in LSU at night, man, they'll, they'll get they'll get street cred no matter what happens from the committee if they keep it close. Hey, uh, Austin Lane back in the Action Sports Jack Studios. Brent Mortneau here in Brandon, Mississippi. Minshew Mania continues to be a big thing. We're talking college football with ESPN's Jason Fitz. Jason, I, I know, uh, listen, college football is awesome. You're experiencing some of the great atmospheres on college game day. But is there a sense at all to this point, halfway through the year, that the season's been a bit boring? We're not having enough drama, not enough games each and every week. Uh, what's your sense of that? Uh, I know you're kind of right embedded in all of it, and especially with all the excitement. Do you feel that or sense that at all, or is that just something from an outside view? Uh, I'll say it depends on what we define as boring. So week in and week out, it's been sort of an every other week where some weeks there's great games on the schedule, some weeks there's bad games on the schedule. It feels like the weekly schedule hasn't given us the drama we're used to. You're right. But I will make an argument, and, and I think it's a pretty compelling one, frankly. It's my argument, so of course I love it. But I'll make the argument <laughs> that even if you want to say that Alabama and Clemson are locked to be in the playoff, and I, you know, I'm not willing to say that necessarily, but if you're willing to say that, then you start to look at the rest of the list of teams that right now make an incredible, like um, Ohio State can make an argument that they believe that they're the best team in the country. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma is going to turn around and say, hey, hold my beer. We're doing pretty spectacular <laughs> things over here as well. And then you look at the gauntlet that is the SEC, the number of teams that, that do. I mean, Georgia obviously feels like they control their own destiny. Alabama feels like they're going to control theirs. Auburn, like I said, thinks they still have a shot at getting in. And guess what? So does Florida, because if you run that the table with Florida's schedule and all you do is lose the SEC championship game, you're still going to have a statement to get in. So I think it's a really interesting season that we'll find out as we get further into conference play. What's happened at the beginning of the season is some weeks the matchups are good, some weeks they're only sort of okay. But over the next few weeks as we get these teams in the SEC playing each other and Wisconsin playing Ohio State in a couple of weeks in a game in Columbus that's going to be absolutely incredible uh, we're we're going to have our eyes on what you know Texas Oklahoma this weekend. You can look across the board and say there's a lot of teams that are still fighting for a playoff chance, and I don't know that we say that every year. So I think in the end it'll end up being more interesting than we think right now. Austin, did yeah. I hear you whisper of Wisconsin Badgers? Oh yeah, I mean Wisconsin hey, listen, Badgers. listen. I mean we can talk about the Badgers, but it's it's like <laughs> me and Jason have discussed before. It's all going to come down to their quarterback play, and we saw it against Northwestern a little bit where Northwestern shut down the running game and you know cone had a little bit of a problem so I, i'm curious to see what happens with uh, ohio state you know i think iowa um we saw what happened against michigan they're a little down but that's going to be a big game as well so i'm not all aboard the wisconsin bandwagon even though i'm a wisconsin guy i still have to see cone produce um in the passing game a little more before i'm ready to write him off as the big 10 champions uh but uh speaking uh, of by the oh, way i agree with everything everything you just said right there was absolutely spot on, brilliant, and on point. And I will make the argument that Wisconsin is built in a way to slow the game down and try and stop Justin Fields from scoring 4,000 points for Ohio State. So yeah. <laughs> they'll have their they, – they are one of the few teams in the country that control their own destiny. Wisconsin has the opportunity to win their way into the playoff. They just got to beat Ohio State to do it. It's that simple. It's a great point. Um, listen, Jason, I'm not sure if you've been following a lot of the Pac-12, but Arizona is an interesting team. They're four and one. I mean, take it for what you want there. But – I think the real story right now in the Pac-12 and out of Arizona is Khalil Tate. This is a guy last year who was 
he was all the rage, right? He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. He was like one of the favorites to win the Heisman Trophy and absolutely just falls off the grid. Nobody knows what even happened to him. I think he was just like a trivia thing at the end of the season. I, I didn't know he was even still playing ball. Well, I watched him against Colorado, puts up, you know, 31 of 41, 404 yards passing, career high, and three touchdowns. Can you remember a guy who had so much hype going in, you know, to his campaign, absolutely sputters, falls off, and you don't hear from the whole season and actually makes the rebound, chooses to stay in Arizona and still do his thing and come back and have a pretty good first quarter of the season so far? Well, and you make a great point. I think part of what's happened with Khalil Tate is that people feel burned from last year. So because they feel burned from last year, they're, they're hesitant to give out credit this year, and they should be giving credit out this year because the Pac-12, by the way, which a couple of weeks ago we were sitting there saying, what, six teams in the top 25 at one point? You, you know, you look yeah. a couple of weeks ago, we're like, hey, the Pac-12 is good. Then they beat each other, and it's funny. When they beat each other in the Big Ten and they beat each other in the SEC, we say, oh, my God, look at the parody and how good they are. When they beat each other in the Pac-12, we just say, oh, well, everybody stinks. So, you know, <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. You're talking about with Khalil Tate. You're talking about somebody that's putting up a career high in completion percentage and at the same time a career high in yards per attempt. So he's pushing the ball down the field further than ever before, and he's doing it more accurately than ever before. So, you know, we're just stuck on if it's not Oregon because everybody's used to Justin Herbert. If it's yeah. not Oregon, it must be nobody. And you're absolutely right. I think by the end of the year, we're going to have to acknowledge that there are some very good offenses that are playing in the Pac-12 that people aren't paying attention to, and I don't know why. I get that. You know, Jacob Eason's not as sexy a story as Justin Fields. It's been a little more up and down for him, mm -hmm. but he's also putting up big numbers. So there are competent quarterbacks in the Pac-12 that can compete with anybody. We just got to decide to pay attention to it. And that's, that's a, a hill to die on weekly for all college football. Absolutely. Jason Fitz from ESPN joining us each and every Tuesday. He does a fantastic job. You guys are doing a great job. Go with your wingo in the morning. I hear you on there. Obviously, your countdown to college game day uh, with Maria Taylor and David Pollock. Uh, really fun stuff. Good insight on college football. Let me leave you with this uh, and just a quick one. Oklahoma, Texas. Do you think Texas has a chance to stun the Sooners? No, I think Oklahoma's better than we, we want Oklahoma to be. And, you know, as much as I love Sam Elgar and I love what Texas is trying to do and Texas wants to be back, man, Oklahoma's just better. The biggest surprise for Oklahoma is they lost most of that big offensive line from last year, and they're still capable of doing anything. Jalen Hurts is just special. So I think Oklahoma's, Oklahoma's in the con conversation for the national champions. Texans is in the, Texas is in the conversation for the very, very good. Yeah, and I tell you what, we got one heck of a Heisman race. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about that coming up next week with Jason Fitz. Have a good week, man. Enjoy your time in Baton Rouge. Call in Baton Rouge. I hope they play Garth Brooks like 50 times. <laughs> you and me both, my friend. Y'all have a great week. Thank you. <laughs> later, See you later, man. And especially, I bet, uh, you know what? You know what I should have done, Austin? Because I should have had Jason maybe break out a little Call in Baton Rouge on the fiddle. On the fiddle? I mean, the Perry. I does mean, he's he got take the requests? Well, he knows how to do it. Yeah, but I feel like you got to pay him for that, man. Like, it's like, I probably do, yeah. but I mean, come on. Maybe, I mean, maybe just, uh, maybe he would. Maybe I'll pay him. Fine, I'll just pay him. Uh, yeah. I'm not paying this guy to come in. I think Action News Jack John wow. is here. Shots fired. Uh, that hurts. Feel hey, the man. love like a knife in the back. That's yeah. it. We got Minshew Mania. Here's what I want to know about Minshew Mania from a Bachman household standpoint. Sign me up. Yeah, okay. Me. Because to me, the temperature a lot of times is the kids. And, like, we're going to spend some time at an elementary school and a middle school here in Brandon, Mississippi tomorrow. Because – I want to get the sense, all right, are the kids even talking about it? Mm. Uh, and I always do it with Ty, but Ty's a little bit different because he loves sports and he's always in tune with it. But Kaylee's <laughs> talking about Minshew all the time. She wants to go to Jaguars All Access and Jags Report Live and, and all these Jags things. How about your family? Everybody talking about Minshew? They wearing mustaches? They asking, hey, Dad, can I grow one of those things? <laughs> yeah, they, they love it. They love it. You know, when we were on vacation and I grew my stash and I told them that somebody said I looked like Minshew, they thought that was awesome. Um, I don't know if they agreed <laughs> with it at all, but they thought it was awesome. They're fully in, and I think it's fantastic that you're down there, Brent. I, I mean, this is I'm, I've been watching the, the stream, and uh, it's been a lot of fun, and I'm so glad you're there. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, you can sense it here. Yeah, like I said, the reason one of the reasons we came here is is what next about uh, Gardner Minshew. It's been a fun story, but I really feel like this town's been left out of the conversation from the broad point of view. 
Now, like we've talked about Washington State. Everybody knows the scene uh, there and, and back in Jacksonville and even across the NFL. We see it on ESPN NFL Network. But I really wanted to find out what this town's all about and what Gardner Minshew's really all about. So we're in the process of doing that the next couple of days. What you got coming up tonight on CBS 47 and Fox 30? Well, I'm looking forward to hearing more about Gardner Minshew for sure. And uh, I'll be tuning in when you, when you get that thing put together. But we are working on a bunch of stuff, of course. And one of the things uh, you guys probably saw yeah, a little coverage yesterday of that sailboat that yeah, washed ashore. Yeah. Yeah. What's up with that? Well, it's a good question. Uh, it ran out of power, apparently, and then just got washed uh, up on the beach. And then yesterday, the weather was so bad, they couldn't get it loose. And, you know, it's the sand has kind of swallowed up the keel a little bit. So the Coast Guard is out there. High tide is at 515 today. Wow. So we're going to, I hope we'll have some live, I know we're going to be covering it. I'm hopeful, hopeful we can get a live shot up and running um, to, to check in on that process throughout the, uh, you know, two hours we're on TV from uh, five to seven tonight. It'll be pretty interesting to watch them uh, battle the, uh, the Mother Earth there and get that thing uh, uprooted and out. All right, yeah, it was a pretty wild picture uh, at the very least, uh, seeing that uh, sailboat there. And tell Mike Burrish, thank you for stopping the rain. We had yeah. an easy, easy drive over uh, out of the rain. I'm not How mad long a drive anymore. is it over there? That was about nine hours. Oof. We drove about five hours last night, got a few winks uh, in a hotel, and, and then drove the rest this morning. But it's awesome, man. It's really cool to be here and see everybody. Uh, worth the trip. Give us, sure. uh, give us an idea. You, what all do you have planned? I mean, I saw the cheerleaders out there earlier. What else do you have planned for, for everybody with Minshew Madness? Yeah, well, we've, his dad's supposed to join us here awesome. in a little bit. And uh, we'll I'm have really his coach to coming that. off okay. the high school football field and, and tell us a little bit more. And, and Did they see saying, this coming? Did they see this coming? Well, they say they do. Uh -huh. You know, I don't know if you can see this big. And, yeah. and I, they were very confident in him. But what I keep telling people, the feel you get around here, and hopefully I can capture this both here on Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 6. 90, but also when we do our TV stuff on CBS 47 and Fox 30, is there's a little bit of pissed offness around here in Brandon, Mississippi, about the way he was overlooked coming out of Brandon mm. High School. Mm. And they didn't like that. Uh, there were guys that were uh, recruited out of classrooms, the same one Gardner Minshew was sitting in, and the coach didn't want to talk to Gardner. And mm. here on the Friday night fields, Southern Miss didn't offer him. Mississippi State didn't offer him. Ole Miss didn't offer him. So never really gave him a chance here in his home state. And that's where all the travails took him, you know, from Troy on an academic scholarship, didn't like the fit, goes to Northwest uh, uh, Mississippi, and then goes to East Carolina. By the way, David Garrard also went to East Carolina, mm -hmm. and then obviously ends up at Washington State. So, uh, you know, this role that he has carved and had to take, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a chip on everybody's shoulder and said it didn't have to be this way. It's interesting because, you know, like Tom Brady, of course, was a sixth round. Everybody compares Minshew because he's a sixth six round draft pick like Brady. And Brady carries that chip around. Obviously, everybody's made a great point of how that's kind of helped make him who he is. I don't sense that Minshew carries that chip on his shoulder like you're describing everybody else around him seems to. Yeah, I think uh, he. I think he's had to explain that so many times that I think he's by it. I don't, I don't feel yeah. like it's a grudge for him, but I think everybody around here seems to carry that a little bit. They're not afraid to, to say, hey, Mississippi State, what were you thinking? Hey, Ole Miss, what were you thinking? Hey, Southern Miss, you're not even in the SEC. What are you thinking? How did you miss this kid? We told you about this guy and uh, didn't give him a chance. But it goes back to everything that we've been talking about for weeks and weeks on Gardner Minshew, and it's he doesn't check the boxes mm -hmm. on the height, the arm strength. And even coming out of high school, the one thing that has changed, and everybody around here has said, is he didn't have the mobility coming out of high school as he now does and he had at Washington State. They said somewhere in between like high school and now, he kind of grew into his body a little bit better, got a little faster, got more mobile. And now all these plays, like nobody anticipated him making those kind of plays in the NFL and, uh, and at Washington State that, that we've seen on the highlights because he didn't really do much of that. He was pretty much a pocket passer here in high school. So we'll continue to work the story, get some of the stories, and try to dig up some dirt on what seems to be a pretty good guy from oh, Brandon, Mississippi. You ain't going to find it, I don't think, but that's great. I can't wait to, I can't wait to hear it from Pops. And uh, good stuff, man. Have a great trip, and uh, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow if you have right, me. We'll see you on TV. We'll be All live right. from uh, here uh, on Fox 30 tonight at 6.50 as well, so we'll see you on TV Look forward uh, to that. a little bit later. All right, Austin Lane, let's get you back in the fold. Let's talk more Minshew. Let's mo talk more Jags. Maybe a little balling and falling as well because we – a little baseball we might be able to mix in there. But it's Minshew Mania all the time. Let's take a timeout on Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. And football practice continues behind us. We are live at Brandon High School in Brandon, Mississippi, hometown 
of Gardner Minshew, your Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback that has taken the NFL by storm here in 2019. Stay with us. Hang on the road with Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Action Sports Jacks with Brent Martineau on ESPN 690 is brought to you by Best Bet Jacksonville and Orange Park. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. Partly to mostly cloudy today. A few scattered showers at times. Highs from 80 to 85. Join me beginning at 5 p.m. for CBS 47. Action News Jacks from the First Alert Weather Center. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds. That guarantees you a $500 gift card if they can't beat anybody's price on a diamond. It's coming like an avalanche of savings. Rocks, big ones, little ones, all beautiful and all one of a kind. Rocktober. Yes, all of our GIA certified diamonds are on sale for one week only. And only at Beards Diamonds. Get her the rock she's always wanted. And take an extra 20% off Beards Diamonds' already unbeatable prices. Choose from half carat to 10 carat. Beards Diamonds Rocktober. For one week only, October 14th through the 20th. In the St. John's Town Center and at Beards BeardsDiamonds.com. Vita de Louis, a locally owned tequila right here in Jacksonville, wants to help our friends in the Bahamas. Hey everyone, this is Austin Lane. And I'm Brad Martineau. Vita de Louis is one of the smoothest tequilas you'll ever taste. It's made in tequila, Mexico, and shipped directly to Jack's Beach. But Vita de Louis has friends all over the world, and that includes in the Bahamas. Help us raise money for the Treasure Key Relief Fund and Hope Town Rising. Check out Vita de Louis on social media and the website VitaDeLouis.com. 50% of all merchandise will go to these funds. Please help Vita de Louis help the Bahamas by going to Vita de Louis.com. There's a lot of reasons for buying flowers for your wife or girlfriend. Birthdays, anniversaries, you're in trouble again. But those are all pretty cliche. How about you get her flowers because she fixed your favorite dinner or just because you want to surprise her? No matter the occasion or no occasion at all, check out Seawalk Custom Florals. They even deliver. Visit SeawalkCustomFlorals.com or call 904-554-0617. And don't forget about your mom either. Seawalk Custom Florals. Hey everybody, Trey Wingo here from Golic and Wingo. Thanks for making ESPN 690 the fastest growing sports station in Jackson. It's clear Northeast Florida has great taste in radio. I mean, you're listening to me every morning, right? Join the ESPN 690 team and get your business notice today. The First Coast is making the switch to ESPN 690, and there's no better time to get your business in front of them. Call ESPN 690 today, 245-8732. That's 245-8732. Grow your business today on the new ESPN 690. Hey, everybody, this is Brent Martineau. Family, food, and football. Renna's Pizza checks the box on all three. Family-owned in Jacksonville for more than 40 years. Fresh ingredients every day. And your home for football all fall. Watch the games and dine in at Renna's five locations. Or let Renna's help with your football get-together. A menu to satisfy the entire family's appetite. There's a Renna's Pizza near you. Marsh Landing, Bay Meadows, Argyle Forest, San Jose, and the newest location in Neptune Beach. Family, food, and football at Arena's Pizza. Cooler weather is around the corner, and our free AutoZone Loaner Tool program is here to help you get your car in shape for those fall drives. You can choose from over 100 specialty tools, borrow the one you need, and get the job done right, all while saving precious time and money. And you can save even more with great deals every day on STP oil, starting at just $16.99 for a five-quart jug of STP conventional motor oil. Visit us at AutoZone.com and start the job fast. Deposit required. Restrictions apply. Get in the zone. Auto zone. All right, it's time for some straight talk. You wouldn't pay $100 for seats to a baseball game where you can get the same seats for 50 bucks. So why pay more on your wireless where you can get the same 4G LTE networks for up to half the cost? For $45 a month, get our unlimited plan with 25 gigs of high-speed data from Straight Talk Wireless. No contract, only at Walmart. Savings may vary. See terms and conditions at straighttalk.com. Trust, tradition, and quality. A winning combination to feel good about your home. Sometimes it's just that time to replace your roof. Or maybe you need to fix your roof after a recent storm. Hey, everybody, it's Brent Martin of Action Sports Jacks. And there are so many roofing companies in the area. But which one can you trust? Let me tell you about my friends at Jack C. Wilson Roofing Company. Trust a family-owned business with owners that grew up right here in Jacksonville. Talk to the owners directly. Get free estimates, and you can trust Jack C. Wilson Roofing to walk you through each step of the process. Tradition, 
Jack C. Wilson is a name you know. The longest standing roofing company in Northeast Florida. They have been repairing and replacing asphalt shingle roofs since 1946. How about quality? A roof you will tell your neighbors about. Quality from start to finish, shingle by shingle. You can request a free estimate at jackcwilsonroofing.com. It's the first name in Jacksonville Roofing. And make sure you let them know Brett Martineau sent you. Time to register for the 16th annual USO Armed Forces Half Marathon and Freedom 5K, one of the premier running events in the Southeast. The mission of the USO Armed Forces Half Marathon and Freedom 5K is to strengthen the bond between the civilian and military communities, promote sound physical health and fitness, and to raise funds for the greater Jacksonville area USO in support of all five branches of the military, including the Florida National Guard and their family members. It all happens on Saturday, October 12th, starting at Metropolitan Park. This is a family-friendly event featuring high-tech military vehicles and prizes. Proceeds benefit the Jacksonville USO and other military charities. The USO Armed Forces Half Marathon and Freedom 5K happens on October 12th, so don't wait. Register today online at jacksusohalfmarathon.com. What's up, North Florida poker fans? This is Allie Mateel from both Best Bet Card Rooms and Jacksonville and Orange Park. The World Poker Tour is well underway at Best Bet Jacksonville. Lock up your seat in the $5,000 buy-in Best Bet Bounty Scramble for just $120. You'll find satellites going on now and every day throughout the entire series. Get ready to take your shot at a million-dollar prize pool and the WPT main event. For more detailed information, visit them on the web at bestbetjacks.com. Best Bet, where anybody can win. Want to hear something crazy? Last month, our friends at Arlington Toyota offered prices up to 50% less on remaining 2019 Toyotas. Want to hear something really crazy? Arlington is extending the sale. The 2020 Super Sales Event has been extended at Arlington Toyota. So come in today and pay up to 50% less on remaining 2019 Toyotas. That's up to 50% less on remaining pre-owned 2019s. Looking at a 2019 Toyota CHR, it's not 22660. Now it's only 17988. That's 17988 for a pre-owned 2019 Toyota CHR at Arlington Toyota. How about a Toyota Tacoma? It's not 29635. No way. It's just 23888. 23888 for a pre-owned 2019 Toyota Tacoma at Arlington Toyota. Plus, you get Arlington's $5,000 Advantage Club and even a national lifetime warranty with unlimited time and miles for new purchases. Shop Arlington Toyota today, 10939 Atlantic Boulevard or online at arlingtontoyota.com. Visit arlingtontoyota.com slash super savings for offer details. ESPN 690 Sports Center Update. Hello, I'm Jake Mitchell. Jags were back at work today practicing, getting ready for this week's game. Here's head coach Doug Marone on what he feels they need to work on. You know, it's just a matter of really talking about this week about, hey, let's get back to the fundamentals. Let's get back to the little details. Um, those are the things that, you know, correct the issues that we're having. And former New England Patriots tight end Ron Gronkowski makes his debut as a football analyst this Thursday. They are hoping he learns more words before the broadcast. The ALDS continues tonight as the Tampa Bay Rays try to pull even with the Houston Astros after squashing them 10-3 to last night. Stay connected with ESPN 690 while you're at work by listening on ESPN690.com. The best-kept secret in tires is TireOutlet.com. Tire Outlet offers wholesale prices, premium service, and TireOutlet.com always has a safety-first focus. With locations throughout the First Coast, there is no need to go anywhere else for tires and service. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. I'm sitting, by my, I'm sitting with the defense by the lunch table. He goes, Austin, come over here. I'm like, Alex Smith knows my name. That's pretty cool to start things <laughs> off with. And then all of a sudden, me and Alex Smith are talking about But I'm saying... The, the culture, it manifested on itself. Weekdays from 3 to 6 p.m. on ESPN 690. Brent Martineau. You see him every day on CBS 47, Fox 30. Action Sports Jack. Austin Lane. He's a former Jack star and current MMA fighter. Broadcasting live from the Anna Jar and Levine studio. This is Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 and ESPN690.com. I think everyone in the locker room already knew uh, right. what... Minshew was capable of, and we're allowing the world to revel in that and enjoy <laughs> it and have a little bit of fun with it. But, uh, you know, we've believed that for a long time, and the sooner that people outside start to realize that, the better. You know, Connor Gardner has um, just a tremendous amount of ability 
He has a tremendous amount of confidence. And if you can put those two things together with some football IQ like he has, it allows you to go out there and make a lot of plays. Well, that's Chris Conley last night on Jags Report Live on CBS 47. You got to come out top golf. Now, yesterday was a little bit rainy, so I get it. But Chris is awesome. I mean, he has been doing a great job on television. This guy's got a future in it. He's really fun to watch, fun to listen to, gave us some information uh, that, that you probably won't hear anywhere else. And, and that's really cool, uh, both on Gardner Minshew, but I also think on DJ Chark, and we'll probably play that a little bit later. Brent Morton here in Brandon, Mississippi. See, they knew all about it here in Brandon, Mississippi, what it could be for Gardner Minshew. And I thought what was interesting is that Chris Conley said they kind of knew what he was even on the practice field. They could sense there was something about this guy. So they're a believer in Minshew as well. Not, he didn't have to prove it to them over these few games that he's already done that. Austin Lane back in the Action Sports Jack studios. Is that a confidence, Austin, that builds around a quarterback in practices? Or do you have to get it done in a game or two for people to really buy in? Um. You know, I think it has to be done in a game. You know, I mean, you can be the, the rah, rah, vocal type in practice and everything. But at the end of the day, if you are that type and you're not winning football games, you know, you're, you're not making the passes that you're supposed to make. You're not going to win over that locker room, you know. So w whether it's plays that he's making w w with his feet and he's extending the, the, the play a little bit and then making, you know, like a Brett Favre-esque pass, um, whether it's the, the, the dimes that he drops in the end zone to DJ Chark or D.D. Westbrook, I mean, all those little things, they start to add up after a while. And by the time you're in, you know, game two, game three, and you're winning, uh, players are going to follow you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, let's do a little balling and falling. Uh, we are expected to have uh, Gardner's dad join us in just a little bit from Brandon, Mississippi, and a little bit later, his high school coach, too. So that's coming up as we continue Minshew Mania on the road here on Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. We appreciate everybody who's already stopped by and all the kids that came out earlier in the show. Uh, you can always check that out on all our video platforms on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and Twitch. And, of course, you can listen to the show on 10 different platforms as well. What you got today for balling and falling, man? Uh, so balling, you have to go last night, San Francisco 49ers. You know, they're they're 4-0 oh, yeah. right now, uh, only one of two 4-0 teams, and they got it done on the ground. Uh, rushing the ball 40 uh, times for 275 yards. Uh, very impressive by the San Francisco 49ers. I get it. You know, people can say that the Cleveland Browns are, you know, they're not as good as we think they are right now. Baker Mayfield's pressing a little bit. But you have to give a lot of credit to San Francisco 49ers who didn't even make that game close. Yeah, they're really good. I mean, they look good, and they don't have a lot of weak spots. And I think Shanahan's a really good play caller. I mean, just a really, really good play caller. And, and by the way, that defense, you know, that everybody criticizes around here, they're playing the same defense up there, right? Isn't that the same scheme? Yeah, 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 well, exactly, you know, and listen, in, in terms of their defense, especially their defensive line, uh, they've they've made it very adamant that they're going to build in the defensive line. You know, I want to say, like, it seems like their last three or four first-round draft picks have been catered to that defensive line, you know, and it's paying dividends. And obviously their offensive line is playing at a very um, high rate as well, and they don't have the, all their starters back yet on their offensive line. So anytime you can win in the trenches, Brent, it's like I always say, you're going to have success, and right now the San Francisco 49 are 4-0, so I would say they had some pretty good success. You watched both, so last night I didn't get to see the game. I was listening I and kind of watching uh, on the on, on just the updates, but uh, because we were driving, is there? Do you think he's a special player? Because there's there's going to be a lot of comparisons this year and through the years. I think with Josh Allen and Bosa, uh, what did you see out of Bosa? And do you is it way too early to tell? Like, hey, I'm glad we got Allen or. Uh, not that they had the choice to get both, no, but, but yeah. San Francisco had the choice is my point. Like San Francisco could have chosen maybe the better player if if people believe it could be Josh Allen. No. So listen to, to me. I mean, there's a reason why Joe Bo Joey Bosa went as high as he did. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it Joey or Nick? Nick's the one in uh, San Nick, Francisco. Yeah. yeah. OK, I'm sorry. So I might have said Joey. Too. Yeah. So th there's a reason why Nick Bosa went as high as he did, you know, and if you go back and you watch the combine a little bit. It wasn't like necessarily his numbers really jumped off the screen. You know, he wasn't running like a like a Vernon Davis freakish, like, you know, four four or whatever like that. I mean, I think you're running like a four seven five. You know, that's pretty that's pretty uh average. But what makes the you know, and this is both both Bosa brothers here, because Joey had the same thing when he was coming out as well. He, when he went to the Chargers. It's the fact that they're so polished already, you know, and that was evident with Nick Bosa, as opposed to Josh Allen, who listen, Josh Allen is a freak of nature. Just go up to him and you're gonna see. Um um, what I'm talking about. I mean, the guy's a, a super athlete. Um, he's quick. He's got the fast twitch fibers and everything like that. 
I, I could go on for days with Josh Allen. But the difference right now is, I think, and this is opposed to the both Bosa brothers, is that they're they're already polished. You know, like Bosa um, is great with his hands already. Like he he knows what kind of moves he wants to incorporate. Not to say Josh Allen doesn't have that already too. I'm just saying, from from the overall spectrum of defensive ends in the NFL. I think Nick Bosa comes across like he's already like a four or five year bet, just the way he uses his hands and the way he's able to shed blockers. I always think it's astonishing that, what do I say? Like, if you make it to that level, like you did, it's, you're a 1% athlete, basically. Yeah. And to have two people in the same family that can make it and be that good, you know, two top five picks mm-hmm. in the NFL, I mean, that's an amazing thing. I mean, think about that. And I know T.J. Watt's a good player in Pittsburgh. You get J.J. Watt. So there, there's examples of it. I just also think it's astonishing. I mean, it's just an amazing thing that that can happen. And I also, every time I bring that up, I apologize to my kids that they don't have good genes. <laughs> well, at least you're nice about it, Brent. Yeah, unless I buy them at the store. That's I was going to say, man, get on those steroids. Let's go. <laughs> all aboard. Uh, all right, here's my balling. <laughs> It ain't the New York Yankees, damn them. Yeah. Uh, but it is the other three that avoided elimination. The Nationals did that uh, against the Dodgers. Obviously, the Rays were able to take care of business against Granke and Houston, and that sets up a game tonight for the uh, Tampa Bay Rays to try to stave off elimination uh, once again. And the Cardinals did it against the Braves in dramatic fashion in extra innings. So we got some good baseball outside of the Twins. They weren't able to put up a fight against the Yankees, just couldn't swing the bats. Yeah. But uh, my balling is is that. And now I'm in a real big pickle, okay, because there's this Huckleberry bet. I got $100 on the line, and it's been a lot of fun up until about now for me because I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and how this is going to play out. Sure. And I really wanted to win this. Like, I wanted to win this more than, like, anything. Like anything. I mean, okay. think about what you like for your kids. Think about what you want to do in life. I really just wanted to win this bet. Yeah. So I'm disappointed. But <laughs> I don't think I'm going to win the bet. But on top of that, I almost have to root for Houston anyway because what's even worse than losing the bet is if the Yankees make the World Series. Okay. So I don't think Tampa can beat the Yankees and go to the World Series. My goal was Minnesota and getting them to beat the Yankees. <laughs> Sure. So I don't think it can happen. Houston is the best chance to beat the Yankees. And so I almost have to root against myself in the bet just so the Yankees don't make the World Series. You see my dilemma here? Talk about the mental gymnastics you're going through right now, man. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. rough. I'm Let's sorry see. to hear that. All right. So after all that, I'm probably the one that's really fallen. But go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, so fallen. Uh, listen, there's only one quarterback I've ever really known. That I've that, that I've known that has taken you know performance enhancing drugs and been busted for it, and his name was Will Greer, played for the Florida Gators. Brent, who was Will Greer's head coach? Uh, Jim McElwain. That is correct. Breaking news today out of Central Michigan: quarterback David Moore tests positive for a banned substance. Really? Uh, the university is to appeal the NCAA decision. Now, not saying these two things are connected by any means with Jim McElwain. I'm just saying the fact that <laughs> sounds like you kind of, Oh, you know what? That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. All right. I was trying to set it up, but I'm just going to come out and say, I mean, how is, is that a coincidence or is there something more to that? Cause it's like, I just said, I mean, I don't know any, really any guys in NCAA that really fail for, you know, drug testing. I'm sure there's guys out there. I just don't come across those headlines. It doesn't happen very much, but especially college. at the quarterback position and especially quarterbacks that have had the same head coach. I just, that's kind of weird, man. That is a bit weird. And I remember talking about the Will Greer situation. And I think the big story around the Will Greer situation is whatever he took and and how he did it and didn't know or whatever it was, is the fact that most, I think all, but probably most, especially big time, college athletic programs, they have everything you can take that has been approved by the NCAA, like right there Mm -hmm. in the training room. Like you don't need to go to the supplement store and say, well, I'm going to just go pick this up today and try this. You don't need to. You got it all right there. And so, to me, that's the stupidity of the guys that do that, Mm -hmm. unless they're trying to get an edge, trying to cheat, trying to use something that's illegal. And then, well, if that's the case, then they made their own bed because they tried to get away with it, and they didn't. So you're right, though. I remember around the Will Greer story, we talked a lot about it. Like, this is very uncommon for to get popped for this stuff. And so uh, maybe it's more of a practice around college football than we even know Mm -hmm. and want to admit because it doesn't get found out often. Uh, or maybe it's a new trend where it's going to happen, or maybe it's just a coincidental thing, but it's an interesting point. I didn't even realize that until you just brought it up. My fallen for today has got to be Baker Mayfield, man. I mean, the Browns were terrible. 
And where does Mayfield sit now in the quarterback conversations across the NFL? I feel like one week he'll be, oh, yeah, this guy's going to, he's got the goods. And then the next week it's, oh, my gosh, what a disaster. Mm -hmm. And I, I think overall that inconsistency right now has me scratching my head. I've never been a huge Mayfield believer. I'm not big on some of the things that happened in the offseason, although none were egregious. I'll mm -hmm. admit that. I get it. I just think some of those things are not good to do as the quarterback of a franchise, and, and especially one that's pretty unproven to this point with all the pressure on Cleveland. And I think it's blowing up a little bit. Now, I have a hesitation to say completely because their schedule will get a lot softer mm -hmm. in the second half of the year, and they can make up some ground. The question is, will Mayfield and the Browns be a mess by the time they get to the easy part of their schedule? Yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, and the, the problem with Baker is that, let's be honest, he's very outspoken, um, a very confident, uh, and, you know, some people want to call him a brash individual. And those characteristics at the same time, I think, are what make him such a great quarterback. You know, that's mm -hmm. what, what made him such a great quarterback in college. I think it's what made John Dorsey, the GM of the Cleveland Browns, fall in love with Baker Mayfield. So, you know, it's the you got to play both sides of the fence, right? Where those kind of characteristics made him so great. Now, yes, the Cleveland Browns, for all things considered, you know, the, they, they were the hype machine going into September. And now, you know, the, the hype's kind of died off a little bit. Otto Beckham Jr. not really getting involved in the offense that much. Um, far, finally, they've been starting to get Jarvis Landry a little bit. Nick Chubb looks like he's doing pretty well. But overall, they're underachieving. And, and that's, the, that's the bottom line. And it, it stems with Baker Mayfield. I, I just come to the philosophy where, if you want to act like the man, you know, if if you want to do all these quotes to, to Rex Ryan or whoever is calling you out and, you, and then you want to clap back, as the kids are saying, by all means, clap back, you know, and by all means, stand up for yourself. I'm, I'm completely for that, especially, you know, in, in, in this landscape now of social media and everything. But you got to remember, man, every time you clap back and every time you say something or, you know, you try to make a snide remark, if you don't follow through and if you talk like the man, but you don't perform like the man, people are going to come after you tenfold, you know? And I think that's what's happening with Baker Mayfield right now. I think if, if Baker Mayfield wasn't, uh, you know, that cultivating personality like he is, we wouldn't be given such a hard time. But the fact that he is, you know, in the, in, in the press conferences, you know, kind of chirping and everything like that, and then he's not performing well, um, you know, people have an issue with that. I, I compare it to Felipe Franks a little bit, you know, and obviously Felipe Franks fell with an injury, and, then, and that's a horrible thing, and I hope his recovery is going fantastic. But there is Felipe Franks in the Miami game where he didn't have the best game, but, you know, he's on the sidelines, you know, talking to the fans and everything like that, and a, a lot of sports media and a lot of journalists had a problem with that as well. So it, it is one thing to, to be cocky, uh, to be confident, to act like the man, but you have to back it up or else no one's going to come with you on that. Yeah, and I think the Franks thing was more of a one-off deal. I feel like the Mayfield thing is so he's such a polarizing player to begin with. So so many people that would, you know really are in his corner and want to be right. And everybody, by the way, this day and age wants to be right yeah. when they make an, uh, an assumption about a player, if he's going to be great or not. And so I think people want to see him do well, but then there's this other faction that's like they love to hate him. He's an easy well, guy to hate and he, easy guy to root against. Exactly. And to be fair, Felipe Franks, remember it wasn't this season, but last season he actually told the crowd to shush. And that, yeah, was, yeah. And that, that was his home crowd. Yeah. He, he told to be quiet. I so, actually agreed with him there. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm just saying it's, it's not really his it, first thing of, uh, you know, being polarizing as well. I understand. Yeah. Uh, hey, the most popular guy in Brandon, Mississippi is Gardner Minshew, right? Correct. But we're going to talk to the second most popular guy right after this. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 rolls on on the road. We are at Brandon High School, the high school of Gardner Minshew, your Jags quarterback in our Minshew mania on a Tuesday edition of Action Sports Jacks continues on ESPN 690. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. All right, so that's another example of maybe he's being a distraction to the team. Give me some more, Brent. What else we got? Uh, the Brinks and the, truck, and you then said. We, and we had the Brinks truck. Yeah. Players have shown up in old cars. Players have shown up in hot air balloons. This isn't the first time that someone showed up in an exotic vehicle to training camp. I don't see anything that's a big deal. Jalen Ramsey's not out getting arrested. Jalen Ramsey's playing football. Everything else, I'm cool. Weekdays from 3 to 6 p.m. on ESPN 690. I'm Thea Jeffers, owner of Breezy Jazz Club and T-Works Interior Decorating. It doesn't matter where you come from, it's possible to own your own business. But starting a business isn't easy. The Jacksonville Women's Business Center helped give me the confidence to keep going when the going got tough. 
at JWBC, I got the training, networking, and support I needed to help me reach my goals. To find out more about how JWBC can help you, visit JAXWBC.com. Is today the day it'll finally stop raining? We sure hope so, but it's been a very wet summer so far. This is Mike with Big Fish Roofing. Don't forget, your roof is the first line of defense against the elements. Here at Big Fish Roofing, as an Owens Corning Platinum Preferred Contractor, we are locally owned and we drive our business with quality and integrity. We do not require any down payments until your roof project is complete. You can find us at bigfishroofing.com or facebook.com slash bigfishroofing. We are the roofers you can trust. We are Big Fish Roofing. Attention men and women. If you would like to get your hair back, then you need to listen to some of our clients. John in Orange Park. IHRS showed me what was causing my hair loss and helped stop it. Call IHRS now at 904-777-IHRS. Find out how to grow your hair back with a free hair and scalp examination. Mike from Bay Meadows. I finally found the most experienced company who could restore my hair. Now I have hair where I had none before. Results guaranteed. Diane from Ponte Vedra. Now I have what lotions couldn't give me. Hair. Find out why you're losing your hair and how to grow your hair back. Call 904-777-IHRS for a limited time free hair and scalp examination. Now my hair will grow for the rest of my life. Thanks, IHRS. Thank you, IHRS. Thanks, IHRS, for giving me my hair back. Hurry, this free examination, normally $199, is yours for free and good only through Sunday. For your free examination, call IHRS at 904-777-IHRS. That's 904-777-4477. Call now. You know you'd like to add an $80 gift card to your wallet. Well, that's exactly what you can get this October at any of Tire Outlet's nine locations. We're here to tell you about the Yokohama Fall Rebate at TireOutlet.com. You'll receive up to $80 on a Visa prepaid card or Visa virtual account with your purchase of four select Yokohama tires. The Yokohama Fall Rebate offer, only this month. See more rebates and info at TireOutlet.com. Wholesale prices, premium service. It is the home of the Action Sports Jacks Dream 18, and it can be your golf destination, the Golf Club at Southampton. Hey, everybody, it's Brent Martineau. The Golf Club at Southampton is where I play a lot of golf, and you can too. Enjoy your golf experience by calling 287-PLAY. Play some golf, watch some football, and oh, yeah, food. They've got that too. Southampton has it all, even a special tailgate catering menu. Give Lisa a call for your tailgate catering. 287-PLAY for tea times, football, and food at the Golf Club at Southampton. The Stephen A. Smith Show. I don't know what would make him think I would care about him. You damn whether I'm blocked on Instagram or not. Not like I tried to Instagram him directly. Anybody thinking about trying to post something on his page? The Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. I really believe in the back of his mind and his heart somewhere. He felt like he'd be on the field at some point this year. Now, that may be true. That may not be true. It's one of those guys that really believes somehow I'm going to just find a way. Well, that's Mike Leach, Washington State head coach. He came on Action Sports Jackson on ESPN 690 a few weeks back when this all started, at least in Jacksonville, it all started. And Leach was outstanding talking about the Jaguars quarterback, sixth-round pick out of Washington State from Brandon, Mississippi, and that's where we are today at his high school, Brandon High School. Brent Martineau here, Action Sports Jacks, Austin Lane, back in the studios in Jacksonville as he preps for his next MMA fight. <laughs> He's in fight camp. And by the way, you don't want to take on this guy, Austin. Oh, I know about him, I man. Mean, I think he's seen some karate back in the day. Yeah, I read up on him. He might I be sure in the did. heavyweight division with you now. He yeah. might take you on. And this is Flint Minshew. I say, you know, the most popular guy around here has to be Gardner. But you might be number two on the list these days. I don't know. My my daughters helped him win a few state championships, <laughs> so I think they're probably – uh, time for and, two. and you know we don't give enough love to and i'm sure you're very proud of as well a guy like demario davis who absolutely who, uh, gardner is going to play against this week with the saints a great person from this community and a good uh, example and, and role model to a lot of these kids uh, i know y'all saw the whole thing about him getting fined for his headband yeah and, you know he's had a lot of support and 
great person to be representing this community. All right, how is this all for you? You, by the way, I, I got you're so you guys are so gracious. This town's fantastic, full of nice people, so hospitable because God's country, man. I, I, I know yeah. where I know where we're at in this thing. I've been in this yeah. for two decades. I I get it. It can be a grinder. You got goofballs like me calling, and and we're calling from all around the country. <laughs> but you guys have been so good. Every last one of you, you're getting a ton of phone calls. You must see 904 pop up like about 14 times a day. Send a few 904s. What, I have. What, what's it like? I mean, what's this moment, this month? And I know you lived it at. Washington State a little yeah, bit, but this feels a lot different. bigger scale. Yeah, uh, it, it's great. I mean, you, you know, it's better than the alternative, <laughs> of true. course. I mean, obviously, we we hate what happened with Nick and 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 that, but I'm glad he's taking advantage of his opportunity, and you know, we'll we'll take whatever goes with that. And that's that's part of this. We, we appreciate people covering Gawker. Yeah, and, and uh, so that's cool. And and I sense, and I'm trying to kind of relay this in a nice way from everybody here in in uh, Brandon, Mississippi. But there's a little bit of chip, and it's not just on Gardner. I think it's everybody around here that says, hey, you guys forgot to look at this guy coming out of high school. Oh, I still get upset about it. And, you know, anytime I talk about it, people can hear it in my voice. Uh, no, it, it, it was a rough road. And, uh, you know, anytime you see your kids hurt like that, uh, because he always did what he was supposed to do, and, and the scholastics was there, the leadership was there, the production, the uh, everything that was there. Other than the fact he wasn't six four and didn't run a four six, um, so and and so I have a lot of uh, I hate to say bitter feelings. It obviously worked out great for him, and and a part of that path made that he, made him who he is. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, those those guys are sheep. I have very little respect for. Them. Flint, and I have to ask you, man, as a parent, because I kind of had to go through the same thing, and it was my problem where I was from a super small town. So, like, mm -hmm. the University of Wisconsin, they weren't recruiting me, you know? So, like, my yeah. mom actually had to go out and, you know, try to get universities to talk to me a little bit. I mean, from your perspective as being a parent, you know, and, and you see your son's dreams, they're not coming to fruition for whatever reason because he's too short. I mean, what do you tell your son in that situation then? You know, control what you can control. That That's the way we've always been. Um, and even at a young age, before you got into this, we, we've always, we have all these little Minshewisms around the house. But, <laughs> you know, it's a control the controllables. And, and the only decision you can make is to outwork everybody else. You will never be the biggest or the fastest or the strongest. And, and But you can always choose to outwork everybody. And, and he took to that. And, mm -hmm. and so that's. Anytime something didn't uh, remember, we were driving over to Alabama one day for a rivals camp or one of those camps, and Southern Miss called and said they were going to offer somebody else, and you know, obviously very upsetting. And he went over that day and won that camp, you know, and just got kicked in the crotch, you know, told that that he wasn't wanted, and um, and went over there and, and won that camp. So. Uh, it's a, it's, that's just what he's done. Do you think there's a sense around here? You talk to Coach Rogers. You talk to some other folks. They're like, "Hey, this isn't that surprising. Not as surprising as all you guys think." Is is there a sense in your household that he was destined to do something? I mean, maybe this wasn't it in terms yeah. of being uh, so good in his first five weeks of the NFL. Right. But well, uh, you know, did you sense that there was something really good inside that that from an athletic standpoint, he was going to he was going to find it eventually. They were going to find him. He was always him. always figured out a way, even young playing a little baseball, basketball things. He always figured out a way to win. He always figured out a way to, to – he's very smart. He figures out things. And uh, so we, I know people don't believe this, but I, I, would, I never in my mind thought – even if he'd have gone to Alabama and been a backup, he'd have made a camp and he would have won a spot there and he'd have just kept grinding. I mean, I, I just knew he would never quit. And um, – you know, unless, you know, unforeseen, like an injury or things yeah, yeah. like that. But, but I, no, we, we always felt like he would do it. Austin, there's a sense here, too, talking to some folks, that he wasn't the, as mobile back here in his high school days. But mm -hmm. somewhere along the way, he, he got some more quicks. The footwork got better. Is that is that accurate? Well, I don't know how accurate that is because if you pull up his high school film, you see a lot of what you see on the field. So he is running around. Yeah, he's running around okay. a lot. Now, he was never like a 40 guy. But, um, you know, when, when you're – uh, you know, he was a starter as a ninth grader, and uh, you don't run that guy very often because there's not, you know, whereas in the pros you got a number two and a number three and yeah, yeah. whatnot. You, you didn't you have that hurt. here, Brandon, <laughs> high school. So I think they tried to be very careful with him. And, you know, you play a lot of games, and, and so uh, that 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 was always, uh, you know, at, at a young age he could dunk a basketball, he could do things. So that, that whole thing kind of. You know, those things take like that he's too short. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there that call themselves 6'2 and 6'3, and they're not. 
Yeah. And, yeah. you know, he, he's been that height for a while now, and, and he's been as quick as he is for a while. I think his body's filled out. He's stronger. That obviously helps. But, uh, you know, these guys, like I said, they just repeat what they've heard. So, we, you know, one guy said, oh, you know, his arm isn't strong enough. You know, he didn't play with any Division One receivers. He didn't play with any guys that I don't think that have ever caught a college catch. He played had great teammates and all, but, you know, you, you, you play and you throw to who you're playing with. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's what he always did, and he was always successful. I think he had some guys in the trenches when he was playing. I swear, pretty decent, right? Was that oh, now Fletcher, uh, Fletcher Adams is yeah. a, a defensive lineman at uh, – at Mississippi State. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so and I think that's it. Is, is that about it? And, yeah. and now, the, you know, the interesting thing around here, Austin, is we talk about the attention, is some of the folks say now, guys like Demario Davis, who was kind of in a similar situation, really went to mm-hmm. Arkansas State. Yeah. He's beaten the odds. Now Gardner as well. He's opened the door for some other folks that are now playing. Yeah. Because now we're yeah. saying, hey, wait a minute, we're missing yeah. something down there in Brandon, Mississippi. W- <laughs> well, and I'll say this, too. The whole recruiting process or the whole evaluation process, if you want to call it that, they can tell you they evaluate. They they don't. They they if this Check kid boxes. gets an offer here, it, it yeah. you know, I always tell people this. When he got that Alabama offer, gosh damn, everybody thought he was great then. You know, when Saban likes you, everybody likes you. But before <laughs> that, you know, nobody wanted him. And uh I always tell there there there's a flaw, especially in evaluating quarterbacks, because you go to these Elite Eleven rivals camps, things like that, and they never ask you to make a decision. It's like, okay, line up, throw here, run here, do this, run that. And you're mm-hmm. like, that has nothing to do with the game. I mean, you have to be able to do those things. But if you can't decide which guy's open or what coverage they're in or whatnot, you're not there's, – hey, there's plenty of guys not in the NFL, not in college, that can throw really hard and that can run and, and, uh, and big and strong, but they, you don't see them. They get cut every day off teams. Yeah, you're sitting there in the stands and, and at these games. Are you thinking with them? Because I, I, I'll tell you, I, I, don't, I don't talk to game X's and O's like that. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't play the game. I'm, but I noticed in the Denver game especially, and I'll take you back to like the first half, late in the first half, they, they throw the touchdown, but I think it gets called back. I think this was the sequence. And then on third down, uh, after that penalty, he kind of threw one in the dirt because it wasn't right there open. And right. they wanted to get three points. He wanted to make sure of three right. points. I show, That right. seemed like a veteran-savvy kind of decision sure. that you're probably living through on every play and kind of yeah, watching yeah. him think a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you you got to know where you are in the game. I mean, you know, if it's a, a third and five, I mean, two does, does you no good. And um, I think, like, when you saw him run around and throw that touchdown, well, if he'd have gotten sacked, they would have still had the field. Goal. Absolutely. You know, so uh, – um, you know, when you make plays out, like what happened last week, you know, the ball gets popped out and thing. That's going to happen some, too. If you're and trying to make plays, sometimes you're going to make them, sometimes yeah, you won't. Sometimes you're not. So, uh, Austin, uh, what you got back there? Well, yeah, I mean, for, for the record, first of all, I'm not, I'm not going to question Gardner Minshew's uh, ability to run with the football because that guy's got tree trunks for legs, okay? Yeah. That guy could probably squat more than I can to squat right, right, right now. So, never going to question his mobility. He but, cleaned 280 as a sophomore, apparently, with ease. Yes. That's the story around Yeah, no, so there was wow. a, actually a guy here, and he got his feelings hurt. Uh, and in fact, I think he's <laughs> a – He's an assistant coach now, but he played uh, some juco ball and then played at Louisiana Tech. And, uh, man, it killed him that Gardner beat him in that power. <laughs> and, hey, because the guy was an all-state power lifter as well. But uh, I taught Gardner how to play. He had very good form. He, uh, I think he started doing that probably fourth or fifth grade. There you go. Flynn, I wanted to ask you, you know, so going back to the preseason, preseason game number one in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, it was kind of like – it was kind of like his – Welcome to the NFL moment, right? Like, I mean, Garner got hit a couple of times. His helmet pops off. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. his best game, obviously, like that. What right. was the, what, what was the phone conversation? Or did you talk to him in person? What was the oh, conversation? Was okay, I, so I was there. So what was the conversation after? I mean, did he still have that confidence about him? Because I feel like that's what makes him so great is he's not afraid of the big moment. Um, he's always confident, and he's always ready to play the next play. Yeah, I mean, we have a saying, if, if you don't want to get hit, you shouldn't play. And, <laughs> I um, love it. And so those things are going to happen. And, um, you know, I, I think Baltimore had a lot of star- starters playing in that game. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll let you guys talk about how many starters we had in that game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, that, they were blitzing. <laughs> remember that game? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. No. So that, that, was a, that was a tough. But you know what? I, I think that game helped him probably more than anything because think about it. By the time he got out there with all the starters, I mean, shoot, now my guys are as fast and as big as, as their guys are now. 
Exactly. Yeah, so I, I think there was a lot of benefit to that. He he got a, a, a Cliff Notes version of what uh, what was to come when the regular season hit. We're with uh, Flint Minshew, Gardner Minshew's dad here in Brandon, Mississippi. Hey, Scott, let's take a quick time out. You got a couple more minutes to sure, hang with us? Sure. We'll hang with uh, Gardner Minshew's dad here in Brandon, Mississippi at his high school, Brandon High School. What a cool place to be on a beautiful day in Mississippi. Glad to be a part of it. Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Rolls on from the road right after this. Hey, everybody, this is Brent Martineau. Family, food, and football. Brenna's Pizza checks the box on all three. Family-owned in Jacksonville for more than 40 years. Fresh ingredients every day. And your home for football all fall. Watch the games and dine in at Rena's five locations. Or let Rena's help with your football get-together. A menu to satisfy the entire family's appetite. There's a Rena's Pizza near you. Marsh Landing, Bay Meadows, Argyle Forest, San Jose, and the newest location in Neptune Beach. Family, food, and football at Arena's Pizza. Starting route now. Turn right at Fortress Mountain. Turn left at Mount Hood. Head south to Moab, Utah. Continue on the Great North American Test Drive. Run with us on a John Deere Gator XUV835 with our quietest cab ever and optional heat and AC and a four-wheel independent suspension. It's built to run where no one else can. Nothing runs like a deer. Search John Deere Gator for more. All right, it's time for some straight talk. You wouldn't pay $100 for seats to a baseball game where you can get the same seats for 50 bucks. So why pay more on your wireless when you can get the same 4G LTE networks for up to half the cost? For $45 a month, get our unlimited plan with 25 gigs of high-speed data from Straight Talk Wireless. No contract, only at Walmart. Savings may vary. See terms and conditions at straighttalk.com. Time to register for the 16th annual USO Armed Forces Half Marathon and Freedom 5K, one of the premier running events in the Southeast. It all happens Saturday, October 12th, starting at Metro Park. It's a family-friendly event featuring high-tech military vehicles and prizes. Proceeds benefit the Jacksonville USO and other military charities. The USO Armed Forces Half Marathon and Freedom 5K, happening October 12th. Don't wait. Register today online at jacksusohalfmarathon.com. Broadcasting live from the ESPN 690 Anna Jar and Levine Studios. Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Call 904-600-4000. That's 904-600-4000. ESPN 690. Jacksonville's home for ESPN Radio. WOKV Jacksonville. Listen live everywhere you go on ESPN690.com. ESPN 690, a Cox Media Group station. Brent Martineau. You see him every day on CBS 47, Fox 30, Action Sports Jax. Austin Lane. He's a former Jax star and current MMA fighter. Broadcasting live from the Anna Jar and Levine studio. This is Action Sports Jax on ESPN 690 and ESPN690.com. Hey, welcome back to Brandon, Mississippi. Brandon High School, the place to be. Minshew Mania for us rolls on. It's kind of like a normal thing around here. Uh, they're used to it, especially... Uh, from the Washington State days last year when it really took off. And now they're just enjoying all the successes of uh, hometown guy Gardner Minshew playing for the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's a lot of fun. Brett Martineau here, Austin Lane, back in the Action Sports Jack studios. And Flint Minshew, Gardner's dad, uh, with us here on the show. We appreciate you taking some more time with us, having some fun. Hey, Austin, by the way, practice just wrapped up. How much do you miss those high school practices? Uh, I probably miss a little more in the Midwest than I do down uh, where you're at right now. I'm sure it's probably a little toasty over there. I always miss the, you know, when it was like 75 degrees and a little breezy. Well, it might be snowing in Wisconsin right now. It's October. It very well might be, Brent. I wouldn't be surprised at all. <laughs> Those guys are in um, sweats. Yeah, no doubt. Right no <laughs> doubt. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so, hey, let's uh, continue our conversation uh, here with you, and then we'll, we'll let you go. And we are, We're going to spend some time on the TV side with Gardner's dad. Uh, as well how uh, how emotional has all this been for the family i mean is is it almost like i mean have you stopped to think about that part of it i mean he's playing in the nfl man he's playing yeah. on sundays and he's playing well so um you know and usually w when you're in the game it's just you're watching the game i mean and, and you don't really contemplate you know oh it's the nfl or it's the pac-12 or you know it's brandon high school uh but like after that chiefs game and we went to eat and um got us a big steak and we were sitting there we we're like Okay, that, that was pretty good. You know, <laughs> you, you went out there and you did well and then, uh, you know, got 
got it going. Yeah, some of the so. folks around here say, hey, you're just seeing them scratch the surface. Do you see a lot that he's leaving out there? I mean, is there a lot that, that, yeah, that he yeah, can play better? Yeah, I think, better? Uh, you know, I, I mentioned earlier we got all these Minshewisms. If you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Yeah. So, uh, so we uh, – Man, you must I, have had stuff plastered around the house. So you might oh, be worse man, than me. Oh, man, my kids got kids. sick of They got sick of hearing <laughs> it. I mean, they, they were, you know – they, they, now they just kind of roll their eyes. But, yeah, know, that's so. what they're supposed to do to that's dad. Right. And speaking yeah. of, I think it's important to note that your youngest daughter is really the best athlete. Yes. I mean, yeah. do you agree with that, too? Do you say that? Does Gardner <laughs> agree with that? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's that's there's no doubt about it. I mean, she, she's at Mississippi State playing volleyball. She's at Mississippi State as a true freshman, never comes off the court. And uh, truth be told, could have played Division One soccer yeah. as well. Wow. So. Well, Coach Rogers over um, here said she might have been able to kick for us in football. You know, that came up, <laughs> and I actually uh, said something to her about going out and practicing, and uh, her, her mother nicked, nicked that pretty quick. So, <laughs> uh, uh, but, you know, volleyball goes on during uh, football season as well, so I, I don't think Kelsa – Walker would have liked that very much. Yeah, yeah. I, um, you know, it's fun. I, I think, and Austin, you'll see this because Ronan's just getting to that age. But yeah. there's nothing more fun than watching your kids play. Like, uh, I mean, I played a little ball, and it's nothing. It's, I, my daughter and my son, they're 14 years old. They play baseball and softball. Who knows how good they'll be, whatever. But just fun watching. I love going to their games. I hate missing a game. Yeah, it's so you must last. be having the time of your life right now. You're going to Tuscaloosa tomorrow to watch Mississippi to watch. State, Alabama. Yeah, that's exactly right. So uh, no, and you. You know, I would tell anybody who complains about going and watching their kids or driving around and doing all this, and, boy, it's over like that. So, and we're very fortunate, you know, obviously with Gardner in the NFL and Callie playing like she is, that we can still follow that, but uh, it flies. Flynn, I have to ask you, uh, so Gardner was one of my very first interviews at the Senior Bowl, and one of the first questions I asked him was, was there a culture shock, you know, going from uh, Brandon, Mississippi to, you know, to – Coleman, Washington. And mm-hmm. I have to ask the same question to you. What was it a little bit of a culture shock uh, going from that the, one place to another? You know, uh, there's a few there's a few differences. I'll always say this about Pullman. And even before Gardner became such a celebrity, they they did a the parents do a great job. They they all included us on everything they did. It's a very tight group. The good thing about Pullman is if you're in Pullman, Washington, you're there for Washington State because there's not much else going on. And it's a Great community, nice people. Uh, you know, they, they kept compl- talking about how what a warm fall and early winter they had, and we were very thankful because we're bundled up like crazy. <laughs> you know, you, you get on a plane in New Orleans and you're wearing just shorts and a T-shirt, and when you get off in Spokane, you better put on some britches and a, and a jacket. <laughs> so, uh, but no, um, as far as culture shock, I, I would say uh, the people are just super nice. Lot, they're a lot like Southerners. You know, Washington mm-hmm. gets that rap, and – I know Seattle's a little different, but uh, you get there in, the, in the, the rural part of Washington, they're just salt of the earth people, just nice folks. So um, I can't say it was a shock. We were just just happy to be there. Yeah, Austin. By the way, uh, we don't. I don't really care so much about Gardner anymore. Flint and I just had a moment on our drive out here. We stopped at Busy Bee and Bucky's. That's okay, right. and those are a few hours apart. And so he just told us he times and, and kind of plans his travel to Jacksonville when he's making that drive, but he's Absolutely. going the opposite direction, Bucky's and then Busy Bee. So we know really the important things in life. You got to well, hit those you, two stops. You, well, you, you fuel up, you go to the restroom, and you get something to eat, and you, you get back on the road. So uh, <laughs> uh, you can do all of those at those two places. Absolutely. Those are hot spots uh, along the path between Brandon, Mississippi, and Jacksonville. All right, we're going to let you run because we're going to catch up with you on TV and, and spend a little bit more time, and you've got some stuff to do to get ready to go see your daughter play uh, volleyball tomorrow, and then you're going to be in Jacksonville, of course, this weekend. I feel like Absolutely. the whole town's coming to Jacksonville. A lot of people coming. One of Gardner's buddies is getting married, and I think the whole bachelor party is coming. Are they really? Yeah, right, there really? Keep them go. away from the quarterback, yeah, will you? No, well, At least no, until that, Sunday night. That, that's off limits till Sunday night. So. <laughs> All right, so I want to ask you, you know, he's kind of in a good place for this. I said this, and maybe you're too close to it, but I said he's in an, a good place in his life where a lot of guys in the NFL, but this maybe when they're experiencing some of the successes, they have kids and, and a wife and all that stuff. He just kind of can still hang with his buddies, and yeah. it's almost like a continuation yeah. of college. Does that help in kind of from a mindset standpoint, you think? Yeah, I think he just transitioned from one to the other. You know, him and uh, Dewey Wingard and um, and Mike Walker, who's on the practice squad, they yep. room together. They have an apartment together, and just I think it's just almost an extension of college yeah, to him. The good thing, he doesn't have to go to class. So, <laughs> <you know. laughs> Absolutely. And, and uh, last part of it. 
how has he, do you think he's handled all this? Because I've also been pretty vocal about saying my favorite part to this point is he's embraced some of it. You know, not yeah. to overboard, but he's embraced some of it, hasn't deflected all of it. And in a quarterback situation, it, you can deflect all of it, but you have to be able to manage it. He's, you guys are getting calls left and right. Mm -hmm. He's getting opportunities left and right. Trust me, I've been calling his marketing folks too, so I know. Sure. And the – the ability to handle that and know your prime job is to go win football games on Sunday. That's right. It feels, I feel like he's doing a pretty good job of both. Yeah, and, and that's one of the – I think as a quarterback at a young age, and, I mean, this is a 6A school here. We had a lot of success. So, at a young age, even in the ninth grade, they were putting a microphone in his face after ball games, And, and you know, that grows a little bit every step you take. And, and I think if you want to be that guy, you got to take both sides of it. You can't just – Go be that guy some of the time. you got to be him all the time. So, yeah. And if you're not him all the time and it's not authentic, your teammates will figure that out quick. Too. Yeah, well said. And, by the way, uh, if I'm Gardner, I just say, yeah, my dad will handle it. And right <laughs> well, now you're hey, handling a lot of it. I, I'm doing some of that. And I, and I, sure, I, I ask him all the time. I, I wish there was more I could do for him. But, uh, you know, we, we, we do as much as we can. Hey, enjoy the ride. I mean, I think all at Jacksonville, I think the NFL, I think Gardner, I think everybody, you know, you never know with everything. Um, and it looks like he's on his way to a fantastic career. But you got to enjoy the ride. I feel like Absolutely. you guys are all doing that. We are every day. Uh, Austin, you got anything else before we let Flint go? No, I mean, that's all I got. Flint, it was a pleasure to talk to you, man. And just, you know, from, from a former pro, pro athlete, um, you know, to whose son's a professional athlete now, it's just it's really refreshing uh, to hear, you know, you don't really miss too many games of your kids and everything like that, man. Um, just very admirable and uh, wish you guys nothing but the best. Hey, thank you. That means a no lot. No problem. And by the way, he told me in commercial break uh, that he could still probably bench more than you. Nope, sure, sure can, man. I have way too long of arms well, to do that. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he did not say that really, yeah. but I did. All right, <laughs> Zach, hey, it's, it's happy hour horn time here on Action Sports Shacks on ESPN 690 on a Tuesday from Brandon, Mississippi. See the beautiful ladies marching in. There's enough for everyone to win. We're going to make this party the best thing I've made. This is my favorite place. Nothing right will replace. No. Nothing. Anything goes. The gangsters are rolling. Half face smiling. And so oh I think of the rhythm while you're drinking. Anything goes. Hey. Grab a drink, get a shot, sip your star tenders. Absolutely. Vita De Luis, a locally owned tequila in Jacksonville. And help support our friends in the Bahamas, by the way. Here's what you do. You go to VitaDeLuis.com. 50% of the merchandise will go to our friends in the Bahamas and raise money for funds coming out of uh, Hurricane Dorian. VitaDeLuis.com is the place to go. We are going to come back from Brandon, Mississippi right after this. We talked to Gardner Minshew's high school coach. Get some more dirt on the Jags QB. Where did it all come from? Why has it been so good right now on the football field? Maybe a little X's and O's here from Brandon High School. Brett Martineau, Austin Lane, Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Rolls on right after this. Action Sports Jacks with Brent Martineau on ESPN 690 is brought to you by Best Bet Jacksonville and Orange Park. Now, the first alert forecast on ESPN 690. A few scattered showers in some spots into early this evening, otherwise partly cloudy tonight, dropping into the upper 60s to low 70s. Partly sunny Wednesday with widely scattered showers and highs in the mid-80s. And Thursday will be partly sunny and mild with a high of 83. From the First Alert Weather Center, I'm Action News Jack's Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish. The Weather Center is brought to you by Beards Diamonds that guarantees you a $500 gift card if they can't beat anybody's price on a diamond. Hey, boss. How's it going? Don't even talk to me. Uh-oh. Sounds like you're having a moment. It's not a moment. It's just been one of those days. Boss, what happened? Uh, so I'm driving around doing errands and stuff. I counted 14 Safe Touch security signs while I was out. 14! Well, I guess word's out that Safe Touch is the best. I mean, there's Safe Touch signs in yards, Safe Touch stickers on drive through windows, Safe Touch on billboards, Safe Touch on the radio. I'm about to lose my mind. Boss, it's okay. There's still plenty of houses out there without Safe Touch. Yeah, but the more people hear about the two way communicator, the guaranteed response time, the crash and smash. <laughs> what do kids say these days? Safe Touch is going viral. Kind of funny when you think about it. Oh, I hate Safe Touch. 
Crooks know to stay away from Safe Touch houses. Hi, I'm Lester Jackson, president of Safe Touch Security Systems. No one beats our technology or our price. Call Safe Touch today at 888 723 8682 or go to safetouch.com. State license number EF233. Vida de Louis, a locally owned tequila right here in Jacksonville, wants to help our friends in the Bahamas. Hey everyone, this is Austin Lane. And I'm Brad Martineau. Vida de Louis is one of the smoothest tequilas you'll ever taste. It's made in tequila, Mexico, and shipped directly to Jack's Beach. But Vida de Louis has friends all over the world, and that includes in the Bahamas. Help us raise money for the Treasure Key Relief Fund and Hope Town Rising. Check out Vida de Louis on social media and the website vidadelouis.com. 50% of all merchandise will go to these funds. Please help Vida de Louis help the Bahamas by going to Vida de Louis.com. Want to hear something crazy? Last month, our friends at Arlington Toyota offered prices up to 50% less on remaining 2019 Toyotas. Want to hear something really crazy? Arlington is extending the sale. The 2020 Super Sales Event has been extended at Arlington Toyota. So come in today and pay up to 50% less on remaining 2019 Toyotas. That's up to 50% less on remaining pre-owned 2019s. Looking at a 2019 Toyota Highlander, it's not 35,000. Now it's only 24,688. Yeah, 24,688 for a pre-owned 2019 Toyota Highlander at Arlington Toyota. How about a Toyota RAV4? It's not 29,865. No way. It's just 21,888. 21,888 for a pre-owned 2019 Toyota RAV4 at Arlington Toyota. Plus, you get Arlington's $5,000 Advantage Club and even a national lifetime warranty with unlimited time and miles for new purchases. Shop Arlington Toyota today, 10939 Atlantic Boulevard or online at arlingtontoyota.com. Visit arlingtontoyota.com slash super savings for offer details. Attention men and women. If you would like to get your hair back, then you need to listen to some of our clients. John in Orange Park. IHRS showed me what was causing my hair loss and helped stop it. Call IHRS now at 904-777-IHRS. Find out how to grow your hair back with a free hair and scalp examination. Mike from Bay Meadows. I finally found the most experienced company who could restore my hair. Now I have hair where I had none before. Results guaranteed. Diane from Ponte Vedra. Now I have what lotions couldn't give me. Thick, beautiful hair. Find out why you're losing your hair and how to grow your hair back. Call 904-777-IHRS for a limited time free hair and scalp examination. Now my hair will grow for the rest of my life. Thanks, IHRS. Thank you, IHRS. Thanks, IHRS, for giving me my hair back. Hurry, this free examination, normally $199, is yours for free and good only through Sunday. For your free examination, call IHRS at 904-777-IHRS. That's 904-777-4477. Call now. Si, si. Very intrigued by the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. You know where you win games, Dan? In the trenches mm-hmm. on Sundays. Appreciate all your thoughts <laughs> on this matter. The Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. Hey, I'm Jay DeMarcus from Rascal Flats, and this is Action Sports Jacks. <laughs> friends in high school best around he grew up tall and he grew up right making touchdowns on friday nights we all knew he'd leave someday from vhs to washington state but those days are done don't you dwell our brandon boy made the nfl yeah. i like the way you work it that mustache down said hey i like the way you work it that mustache down said hood he's strong and fast like them jaguars be pepsi rookie winner of the week playing free and loose that's what we do play as hard as we can says gardner Minshew. headband and shades yeah that's his way styling profiling is the Minshew way one special dude from that jacksonville team give him the ball he's a throwing machine now i like the way you work it that mustache down said hey i like the way you work it that mustache down said hey i like the way you work it that mustache down said hey i like the way you work it that mustache down said hey there we go scott your favorite song brent's back 
Yeah, uh, well, you know, I'll be honest. Out of the parody songs that I've heard, that's one of the better ones. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, man, I don't have a theme song. I'm jelly as hell right now. I know, like, right? Like I said, man, you want to make a song about me? I don't care if it's good, bad, and different. Make a song about me. You'd that's be excited fine. about it for sure. I'm gonna make my own song about me. <laughs> uh, hey, right now we're going, we're bouncing around. We've, we've had the principal on, Brian Marshall. We appreciate him stopping by. Of course, Gardner's dad just stopped by, and now Wyatt Rogers, who, and, and the the bad part about it for all these guys and, and why it's the coach uh, here at Brandon High School and coached uh, uh, Gardner, of course, back in high school and good friends with the family. The bad part about for all these guys, we're here for TV and radio, so I've got to interview them like twice. So apologies. I'll try not <laughs> the, exact, so the exact same questions. Right, no, not that good. you've been asked the same questions overall for the last like year around <laughs> yeah, here, right? That's right. <laughs> uh, well, I will ask you the same question because I think it's important. Is I hope you guys are having fun with this. Oh, stuff. absolutely. Absolutely. It's been a joy. It's been uh, been a lot of fun. Yeah, the, the, you can sense it, too. I mean, yeah. you know, I walked out. The football team was out there getting ready to right. come out for practice, and they could tell that we were from out of town oh, and from I'll Jacksonville, just, yeah. and you could hear, Mitchu, yeah. Mitchu Gardner. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, so Absolutely. everybody's got a little hang yeah, of this thing. Yeah, everybody's really proud. Everybody's really proud. It gives the kids, gives some kids hope, you know. It gives some kids hope, and uh, that's a big thing. Yeah, and I shared that story. Uh, by the way, your son is a big-time uh, quarterback and recruit is going to Mississippi State. Told you that a bit ar- earlier, Austin, so we'll keep yeah. an eye on that. But even for other folks on your football team, that's the place where Demario Davis came from. He got overlooked. That's the place where Gardner Minshew came from. He Absolutely. got overlooked. Absolutely. Hey, we better start looking a little bit deeper that's in Brandon, right. Mississippi, that's right? right? That's right. Our kids uh, work extremely hard. We've got two uh, guys in the SEC that are starting right now as true freshmen, and uh, you know, we run a program here that's as good as anybody in the country, and uh, I, we feel like when we send kids off to play in college that they're ready. Yeah, so. I, we'll get Austin jump in on the X's and O's in a moment, but what is Gardner doing so well, do you think, right now at an NFL level that's allowed him to have some of the success? I think just continuing in his preparation and uh, just developing his football IQ, uh, being ready to play every Sunday when he takes the field, knowing the opponent and uh, knowing where the opponent can be attacked uh, and knowing the scheme that they're carrying it each week is probably helping him a lot. Coach, before we get started, I, I have to uh, I have to com- commend your shirt here. It says, Dogs, we're on a pretty good streak. Can you uh, explain that shirt a little bit that, that you're rocking right now? Well, I, you know, I've gained a little weight during football season. <laughs> <laughs> I started off in an L, and now I'm an X. Yeah, I do you know? the same thing, oh, by the way. Gosh, man. <laughs> and nine-hour yeah. uh, car rides to yeah. Brandon, Mississippi don't help. Stress eating and stress drinking, you know, it'll get you. Uh, so, but we're on a good, very good streak, yeah. uh, pretty good streak. Where that, where was that from? Uh, it was a theme we had a couple of years ago, and uh, just talking about, uh, you know, putting all our chips on the table. I think on the back it says something like, uh, "I'd like to let it ride." There yeah, you go. Let it yep. ride. There you, you go. Know, and uh, just, just going all in every Friday night, you know, and every day at practice, going all in and playing hard and preparing hard. All right, how good was Gardner? In high school. Oh, man, he, he was the best. Uh, he would have to be mentioned in, in the Jason Campbells and the Brett Favs and, um, you know, the guys that come that came out. And, you know, and I say Brett Favre. Brett Favre didn't put up great numbers in high school, but you still want to say that name because he was so prolific yeah. in the NFL. Uh, but, you know, the guys that have come through the state, he, his name has to be mentioned right there. He put up 11,000 yards, you know, passing in his high school career. And, uh, 105 touchdowns. And, I mean, just incredible numbers for the year. Yeah, and and he came in as a ninth grader. Austin, the crazy story here is how Gardner Minshew came in to the NFL for Nick Foles, and quite frankly, how he came in that very difficult situation. Although this was that was very different in terms of being mid-season or not, or in the season or not, but that difficult situation at Washington State mm-hmm. after the suicide of uh, their starting quarterback up there uh, for the Cougars. And then go back to his high school days, and in ninth grade, the uh, quarterback here at Brandon breaks his leg, I believe it right was. Right, his arm. Uh, his arm. Yeah. Wow. And uh, but halfway through the year, he yep. comes in, and well, he he he's the quarterback Absolutely. going forward until yeah. he's he graduates. Yeah, never looked back. Uh, came in that night, threw three touchdown passes. Um, looked, I, I think he was about fourteen years old. He looked like a baby out there. <laughs> I, I was scared to death for him every snap, but. Uh, it, the, the lights were never too big for him, and he, he was never – there was never a moment that he wasn't prepared. 
Coach, when we break down Gardner Minshew, you know, and I did this at the Senior Bowl a little bit when I first met him, and I said, there's something special about this kid with his self-confidence, his self-belief, and his ability to just make people play around him, right? He has that leadership quality. Oh, and absolutely. that's, yeah, and, you know, that can stem from, obviously, a great household. We just talked to his dad, Flint. It's evident there. But that also stems from a great high school program. And in terms of culture, what are some of the things that you guys preach there, um, you know, in Brandon, Mississippi? Well, we, we preach toughness and leadership, and we try to develop some leaders. Um, you know, a, a lot of leadership is born, uh, mm. whether, whether we want to believe it or not. But but you can develop, um, you know, some kids into leaders that maybe don't have the leadership qualities that they come into the program with. Uh, we preach hard work and uh, preparation. And I think, you know, I don't know if Gardner got – any or all of that from us, he had a good bit before he ever started off. Uh, always had that confidence that you, that you spoke of mm -hmm. um, and, and the ability to cross uh, all the barriers and boundaries that exist from uh, different social and economic backgrounds. He, he had, you know, the, the, the poor white kids, the black kids. It was everybody was a teammate to Gardner. Mm -hmm. And um, he had a, the unique quality of being able to unify everyone and, um, and and to unite everyone and, and get everybody going from the weight room to the practice field uh, on the Friday nights, uh, much like you see, you're seeing right now, you saw at Washington State. He's just a real galvanizing uh, force there, and, and especially at that position, you need that more than ever. More than any other. Yeah, yeah, absolutely do. By the way, you were talking about that ninth grade year, that baby face. I mean, it's kind of something like this behind us. I'm going to say it's probably like the top right one. Up there. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks like a... Um, Almost like a junior high kid. You know? <laughs> yeah. Ima imagine a mus mustache coming out oh of that baby gosh. face. Oh, my gosh. Hey, right? look, I would have been scared to death to go to work that morning. Huh? <laughs> if he just showed up in a, with a mustache in ninth grade, I think I would have quit. <laughs> uh, what, what's, uh, what's it like at like your house, uh, your family or people asking you about it? I know it's one thing if we're asking you right. about it. Like you right. got the whole world's now watching. Right. Kind of like a, you know, it's like, man, it's so cool. I know that guy, or or I did this, or I went to church with him, or right. I, or is at this game or that game, or you know, is everybody bringing up these stories where, hey, I want to, yeah, I, I know him. Yeah, you get, uh, you know, I get messages on Facebook. Hey, can you give me an autograph? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm like, come on, man. And, and, and you're just trying to look for a ticket to the game yeah, Sunday, exactly. man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's all I need is a ticket. So if you're in Jacksonville, you know, I'll be there Sunday. But uh, no. You, you realize that um, you realize the impact that he's had on the community because uh, people are that you haven't heard from in a while want to reach out yeah. and all of a sudden you're good friends again you know but um, and I say that in jest but it's it's been great um, you know you, you you constantly have people asking about you know did you see Gardner it was odd you know when when Foles got hurt um, I got a message from Steve Spurrier Jr. And yeah. he said, uh-oh, Gardner's up. And and I was in film preparing for our next opponent. I wasn't able to watch the game, but we clicked it on ESPN and followed the game cast a little bit while we were while we were watching film. And, you know, he got hot there for a while, and it was nice. It was just – it was a special – and it continues to be special every Sunday. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hanging out with Wyatt Rogers, uh, coach here at Brandon High School, Coach Gardner Minshew, of course. And, by the way, we should tell you – and uh, this is all for the folks back home. I mean, my neighbors are huge Mississippi State fans. That's why we ring that bell. Well, his son is going to Mississippi State. He's a quarterback, so keep an eye on him. His name is Will Rogers. That's right. And, um, well, I, I got a feeling the folks uh, that live in my neighborhood probably already have heard his name <laughs> because they're excited about him coming to Mississippi State. Can you the, the thing that impresses me as kind of a casual observer of the X's and O's of football right. is his IQ. Right. And I think, uh, again, I've shared this story. We knew Blake Bortles pretty well. I think Blake Bortles' career was documented. He turned it over a bunch, but the other side of it was when he first came into the league, he didn't know the game well from that position. Right. And that's not a knock. He was just Kareem. He, he needed some time. They wanted to sit him that first year so he could have learned the position a little right. bit more. And he did start to learn it more. And, and uh, I always say Blake had more good moments than people want to give him credit for. But this is a guy now that you're seeing the complete opposite. He takes care of the football, and his IQ is noticeable. It jumps off to me, and right. I think a lot of folks – when did it hit you? Do you remember a play I in high school? I, I, can, I can tell you exactly when it hit me. Between his junior and senior year, we were competing in seven on seven at, at a national tournament in Hoover, Alabama. And um, he came off the field, and we were 
it was a transition between offense and defense, and, and he really spoke about what the defense was doing and what we could do to do this. And I realized at that moment I had taught him all I could teach him. Mm. And, mm. Uh, and, you know, then on Friday nights in his senior year, it was more give and take. Okay, Gardner, what have you seen? What are you, what do you like next series? Um, it, it was a point where he had evolved to where I was pulling from him, and, and we were bouncing ideas off each other. And that, and you know, not that I'm Steve Spurrier, but I've been in it for a long time, and he was a teenage kid, and it, and it just really spoke to me how much time he had spent in his preparation and learning the game of football and our offense and our scheme. Um, it, it just it really spoke to me. And, and that senior year was special. Um, and, and just because I've never had a, a player where you could, what do you like? You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which is the ultimate as a coach, absolutely. really. You want the back and forth. Absolutely. You, know, you, you don't know. want the guy that's going to do everything on his own. Absolutely. You want that conversation, absolutely. especially at that position. At, at that position, absolutely. No doubt about it. Awesome. What you got? Uh, I mean, that, that's super impressive. I'm kind of glad I played on the, you know, defensive side of the ball a little more. Coach asked me what I got. I'm like, I don't know. The tackle came out to block me. Uh, that's all I got for you. <laughs> but, and, and coach, you mentioned this a little bit, you know, I mean, obviously, um, Mitch, you kind of got overlooked a little bit, you know, and whatever you can say it's because of his size. I mean, you know, NFL, I mean, NFL scouts for sure, but obviously even college scouts that, that are recruits. I mean, they have, they have this idea of what a quarterback supposed to look like. What are you supposed to right. act like and things like this? But I mean, ha have you seen a, a change now with, with your program of obviously getting more college recruiters to come kind of through your area since you've had some NFL guys now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, I was telling, telling these guys earlier that, um, you know, we'll have it spring practice we'll have 10 12 power five coaches you know at every practice um you know anybody from alabama georgia uh you know all the way up to notre dame and uh, oregon i mean it's wow. just it's, it's crazy yeah and um and, and a large part of that is because of demario and gardner and uh you know the guys that we put in the sec last year um you know it's it's really helped our program i mean we're sitting here at a stadium that was probably ten million dollars to build, and I think a lot of that, you know, is that is kind of a result of the success we had while Gardner while Gardner was here. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. you know, our, it really put our program on the map. Um, you know, I, th I think we probably averaged over ten wins a season in those four years. Um, a state championship appearance, and a couple South State appearances. I think I know one, but um, you know, it's just. He was um, a big catalyst in this program seeking uh, that, that was seeking to be a regional or state power, and you know, try, uh, hopefully one day to be a regional power. So, um, you know, hats off to him, and I, I think it's I think we're all just seeing the tip of the iceberg of what he's going to be. Um, I, I think that you know, with each rep, the game's going to slow down for him, and he's going to get better and better. Um, I'm just really proud of him. Hope so, awesome. and then just make sure you keep him on speed dial so he writes a check back yeah, someday right? uh, <laughs> here at Brandon High absolutely. School. Uh, and by the way, also, I said this earlier in the show, I probably should reset it. We are here at Brandon High School, and this is probably the envy of all high school football programs in the state of Mississippi. I've got to imagine. Uh, maybe there's another one that's better, but there's not many of them that's better. This facility is unbelievable. I mean, heck, even the technology part of it that allows us to do this show today yeah. is, is better than most places we go on the road. And uh, sits 10,000. They're excited about it here in Brandon. And they're not just excited about Gardner Minshew and Demario Davis, who plays for the Saints. And they'll play to get against each other this weekend. But they're excited about this football team. So I want to leave you with this. Tell us about your football team because your son's the quarterback, but you got a good team. You guys are second in the state, I think, in 6A. Right. And you're 5-2. and two, And you really got a real chance to have a nice year. Yeah, yeah, we're excited. We, um, you know, we, we've had some injuries along the way. Our, our first five, we played three number ones. Two in state and one out of state, um, so we got some guys beat up our first five games. It was brutal, um, and then we we're about to start regional play, or we did last week. Started regional play last week. It's kind of tough on Friday night. Um, you know, it's just all about taking them one at a time. You're playing a really tough league, so you got to get ready every Friday night. Yeah. But we should be in the hunt to win if we 
we uh, live up to our potential. Yeah, and it's a good Friday night atmosphere here in uh, Brandon, Mississippi. Coach Wide Rogers, appreciate you taking Thank the time, you, man. man. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I thanks for it. all you guys have done. Yes, and, and, hey, we got to find this guy a ticket, Austin. Absolutely. He's going to the game Absolutely. on Sunday. Well, we Brandon, you're, you're, you're the man with the hookup, man. Don't talk to me about it. You have all the tickets, man. <laughs> I'll work, if only we knew up. some guy in radio and TV know. that might Get know a, a guy. Pass. Let's go. Absolutely. I'm going to work on that. Uh, <laughs> on speed dial myself. It's not the Gardner Minshew. His ticket allotment's all done. <laughs> I think he's probably used up, but I'll go find some tickets for these guys after the hospitality uh, they've shown us. All right, uh, when we come back, we'll put a bow on the show, a little stay in your lane, and an interesting topic out of Penn State that we got to get to. Uh, but we continue to celebrate a little Minshew mania here from Brandon, Mississippi. These folks have been outstanding. They're fired up about Gardner Minshew. Heck, and so is Jacksonville and the entire NFL. More to come on Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 right after this. ESPN 690, Sports Center Update. Hello, I'm Jake Mitchell. Jags were back at work today practicing, getting ready for this week's game. Here's head coach Doug Marone on what he feels they need to work on. You know, it's just a matter of really talking about this week about, hey, let's get back to the fundamentals. Let's get back to the little details. Um, those are the things that, you know, correct the issues that we're having. And former New England Patriots tight end Ron Gronkowski makes his debut as a football analyst this Thursday. They are hoping he learns more words before the broadcast. The ALDS continues tonight as the Tampa Bay Rays try to pull even with the Houston Astros after squashing them 10-3 to last night. Stay connected with ESPN 690 while you're at work by listening on ESPN 690.com. The best kept secret in tires is tireoutlet.com tire outlet offers also prices premium service and tireoutlet.com always has a safety first focus with locations throughout the first coast there is no need to go anywhere else for tires and service it's dollar down days at planet fitness join through october 11th for just one dollar down ten dollars a month no commitment so check every couch cup holder and coin purse and find a dollar before dollar down days are done join for one dollar down in club or at planetfitness.com see club for details pop quiz if you sell a home for five hundred thousand dollars how much would a traditional real estate agent charge in commission if you guessed twenty five to thirty thousand dollars you're right but if you think that's the only way you're wrong this is why thousands of homeowners are making the switch to Rex. With Rex, you get a dedicated agent and a full-service experience at a fraction of the cost. Rex uses game-changing technology to cut out the middleman and save homeowners tens of thousands of dollars in fees. See if you qualify by calling 833-REX-HOME. Remember, this is your home. Why give an insane amount of equity away to an agent? Rex offers the lowest fee in the industry without skimping on service. You'll work with an experienced real estate team with you every step of the way. Get the most out of your home. See if you qualify by calling 833-REX-HOME. 833-REX-HOME. Florida, CQ 1057788. Minimum fee may apply. Not licensed in all 50 states. Visit rexhomes.com to see if Rex is available in your area. Rex fully supports the principles of the Fair Housing Act and Equal Opportunity Act. Anyone can get on the radio these days and say whatever they want. But how many people back up what they say? Beards Diamonds does. Here's Ben, the second generation of jewelers at Beards. I grew up here. My dad started this business 38 years ago, and we are constantly working to benefit the customer. Not only with the best prices, largest selection, highest quality jewelry and service, but also a price protection unlike any other store offers. We know how good our diamond prices are, and we're so confident they can't be beat. But we want to make sure that you know. That's why Beards Diamonds is offering you a $500 gift card if you can find any GIA certified diamond for less anywhere in North Florida. Yes, a $500 gift card. Anyone could say they have the best price, but Beards Diamonds absolutely proves it and has been for 38 years. But don't just take our word for it. Shop around and compare. You'll see Beards Diamonds will not be beat. Beards Diamonds at the St. John's Town Center and at BeardsDiamonds.com. We're local, you're local, shop local. This holiday season, shop local retailers right here in the 904. When you shop local retailers, you're making an investment in our own community. Shop the 904. Powered by Cox Media Group. Hey, boss. What? You think it's okay to get out of here yet? No, the cops may be still patrolling around out there. Give it another 10 minutes. Okay. Boss? What? You still mad at me? Well, let's assess our situation, shall we? Here we are hiding out from the cops in this storm pipe because you neglected to determine that the house we came up on had safe touch security. Is my assessment correct? Yeah, but I swear they didn't have safe touch last week. That, 
I don't want to hear about a corn pop. We didn't even get to the front door before the Safe Touch video monitoring kicked in. Now here we are, crouching in this stinking ditch. Sorry, boss. Just so I know you know, tell me the Crooks are us motto again. Stay away from Safe Touch houses. Uh, at least you got that right. Crooks know to stay away from Safe Touch houses. Hi, I'm Lester Jackson, president of Safe Touch Security Systems. No one beats our technology or our price. Call Safe Touch today at 888-723-8682 or go to safetouch.com. State license number EF233. This is the Stephen A. Smith Show. Eli Manning is one of the nicest dudes, class personified. It's impossible to root against him. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not calling him some scrub. We're saying Father Time's caught up. The Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Brent Martineau. You see him every day on CBS 47, Fox 30, Action Sports Jack. Austin Lane. He's a former Jack star and current MMA fighter. Broadcasting live from the Anna Jar and Levine studio. This is Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690 and ESPN690.com. Time to put a bow on the show here from Brandon, Mississippi. One more segment to go. It's been a lot of fun hanging out here. And, uh, hey, we're trying to find our way around. Thanks for uh, joining us on a Tuesday edition of Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. We're juggling a lot of things, doing a little TV, doing a little radio. But uh, really cool. Uh, Brian Marshall, the principal. Uh, Flint Minshew, of course, Gardner's dad. Wyatt Rogers uh, joining us, the uh, coach, uh, Brandon High School. And Coach Gardner uh, back in high school, and they have a really good relationship. Sharing some stories from the Gardner Minshew days, what it means to this town. And that's really what we're trying to capture here is what does uh, the Minshew mania mean here in Brandon, Mississippi. So we'll have a lot of that on the TV side of things as well tonight, throughout the week, uh, Sunday countdown to kickoff, and uh, probably even down the road a little bit more. So a little different show today, Austin Lane. Uh, thanks for your patience back there, by the way. So I know you're juggling some stuff too, but having some fun with these guys, learning a little bit more about uh, the Jags quarterback that's making a lot of waves. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm always a big fan of like player psychology and things of that nature. So it's kind of cool to go back to Gardner's hometown and kind of put the pieces together of what makes him so special. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, you got a little stay in your lane because there's a big topic out there that you might get to. Uh, yeah, for, of course, man. So first, we're going to start out with uh, we're gonna go cruise control real quick. And uh, one second, my bad. I got to pull it up here. Okay, so cruise control going out to San Francisco 49ers defensive tackle DJ Jones as he proposed to his girlfriend before the Monday night game last night. Uh, very, very interesting. For, that's what I'm saying, Brent, before the game. I mean, is that kind of unheard of? Because I feel like it always happens after a win, right? Like, you don't want to propose to your girlfriend after a loss or your fiance after a loss. I mean, I feel like if I played in Jacksville and I had a girlfriend I want to propose to her, uh, I just tell her, baby, I have to wait till next season, you know, because we're not winning <laughs> a lot of games. So from, from, from that perspective, man, I guess he kind of, uh, you know, he, he took the initiative and did it before the game. Props no, just, to him. Just think about this. If if uh, you had chosen to do that back in your year under Mike Malarkey, yeah, man, you better pick those two weeks or you were, you were screwed. <laughs> I know exactly, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know I wasn't going to do it before the game because if we would have lost, I would have been pretty bummed out. So no need to pop champagne or celebrate. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, what you got a little pump your brakes? All right, so pump your brakes. This is a big story that's circulating around right now, um, and this involves Penn State. And what happened here? was that uh, a, a, a supposedly a big Penn State fan um, wrote to one of the Penn State uh, players and sent him a letter. And uh, the, the guy's name who sent the letter, his name is Dave Peterson. Don't really need to give him any you know props, I guess, but his name was Dave Peterson. And the letter was directed towards uh, Antonio Shelton. And basically, here's what the letter says in full. Uh, this was taken off of Twitter. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, the, the, the guy's name's Jonathan. I'm, I'm sorry, it wasn't uh, Antonio Shelton. That's the guy that shared this uh, letter on Twitter. But um, the actual guy's name is Jonathan here, Jonathan Sutherland. So uh, the letter goes as follows. Dear Jonathan, my wife and I are proud older graduates of Penn State. We follow all Penn State sports, football, wrestling, volleyball, gymnastics, and basketball. We love it all. I played all the sports in my younger days, still played full court basketball in my 50s, love the competition, but never had the size or the talent to reach your level, Through desire, but the desire was there. 
Though the athletes of today are certainly superior to those in my days, we miss the clean-cut young men, women from those days. Watching the Idaho game on TV, we couldn't help but notice your, well, awful hair. Surely there must be some mirrors in your locker room. Don't your parents or your girlfriend who could have told you th those shoulder-length dreadlocks look disgusting and are certainly not attractive? We congratulate you on your game against Pitt, but you need to remember you represent all Penn Staters, both current and those alumni from the past. We, sh we would welcome the reappearance of dress codes for athletes. You will certainly be playing on Sunday in the future, uh, but, we have to st but we have stopped watching the NFL due to disgusting tattoos, awful hair, immature antics in the end zone. Players should act as though they've been there before. Um, for the glory, signed Dave, whatever his last name was. And before we get into this, Brent, I just want to go with what J uh, James Franklin said today in a press conference real quick. Of course, it was a big topic, and he, he, issued, uh, he issued a statement right off the press conference, and he said that these messages will not be tolerated. This was extremely in inappropriate, racially biased, and selfish to feel like you even have the right to send that message. And then he goes on to explain that the player that was in question um, is one of the team captains. He's an honor student. He gets great grades and is a great member of the community. Um, he's intelligent, he's thoughtful, and he's very caring and committed, as James Franklin said. So, yeah, it's just there ridiculous. You go. I mean, uh, obviously, I think so many folks that I think that circulated on social media, and, and I, I think I know how so many people stand on it, but it's also a constant <laughs> reminder is that uh, well, we've still got a long way to go, uh, yeah. you know, and, and that's uh, uh, we are reminded of that on a lot of different levels and a lot of different issues, but this one uh, is certainly the case. In a sense, uh, you know, Penn State has gone through a lot of things, some self-inflicted uh, uh, at what they maybe tried to cover up and, and all the scandals of Skandusky and, and all that. And I think James Franklin has really brought the program back on the football field. Yeah. And I, I feel a little bit for Penn State because this has nothing to really do with them. This no. is a fan or some who brought this on to the university now, and now they're lumped into this. So it was a good job by the school and Franklin to defend and protect and do all the things that they should have done uh, for the football player. But it's just a constant reminder. I mean, just think of how this guy thinks that wrote that note, right? He, he actually tried to compliment the player three or four times <laughs> while he showed how extremely racist he was. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, what kind of world does that guy live in in his mind yeah. it is really the thing that's hard to connect to um, even if we know some of these things are still prevalent in our society, you know, and and there's a there's a small Brent, there's a small school of people that think that this letter was made up. It's not actually true. They can think whatever they want to think. But I'm going to be honest, man. When it, when I read this letter and I read it a couple of times, and obviously I saw it last night, I, I didn't even really think of sharing it to tell you the truth because, I mean, my first thought is, but of course, you know, I mean, this is this is still prevalent, whether um, it's in sports or whether it's just in society in general. I mean, this is this is nothing shocking to me. This is nothing new. Um, you know, it's just I guess it's, it's a constant reminder that there's still a lot of progress that has to be made. Uh, that's the, that's the first thing that I take away from it, you know, and, and to judge somebody um, by their hair or by their tattoos, by their skin color, or even by their sexual orientation. You know, that's just, that's the, that's the old school way of thinking. You know, that's just the, um, that's just the stuck in your ways kind of thinking. That's, that's the thinking that lacks imagination. And you are, um, you're a break in the wheel of progress as far as I'm concerned. So, um, all it's those, a very small world for such a very small mind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and, and I get it. Those people are out there, but, um, I'm, I'm glad this got brought up actually, you know, I'm, I'm glad this got shared on Twitter cause we're having the conversation right now and it makes us realize that there is still a lot of work to do. Well, here's the thing. It's twofold for me. One, you know, say the, the people, the letter is fake. All right. Yeah. The fact that it's so believable should <laughs> remind us <laughs> exactly of where we stand. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't even matter. If yeah. it was real or not, well, it should matter if it's real. I mean, this guy is unbelievable mm -hmm. if it is. But if it was fakely produced, it's still very much believable in today's world. So, yeah. I, 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 and, and I can believe it, and I do believe it. I, I mean, I think it is real, yeah. uh, regardless of what some of those rumors might be. The other side of it is I still believe this when it comes to race, uh, especially, that I think it's a learned trait as a young person. And therefore, that's on your parents, most mm -hmm. likely. Mm -hmm. And so we are still generations away, probably. Um, at the very best, uh, you know, to, to get those thoughts corrected and, and that hate out of people's minds, because yeah. I think it's a learned thing. I, mean, I don't think people enter the world hating people. 
Um, so I, I think uh, that's just some, uh, some households, unfortunately, some people the way they think, some people the way they're brought up. And uh, I, I think in generality speaking, that's where it comes from, and that's not going away uh, anytime soon in totality. So uh, we, well, we do need to talk about it. It's a good yeah. thing to talk about. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing that people remind us of it in a weird way so we can talk about it, so we can uh, tell people how bad it is that it shouldn't be. Yeah. And uh, we got to keep having those conversations. And I just want to owe you an apology because there's no way this dude's watching our show with my dreadlocks, my tattoos, <laughs> uh, and, you know, being in the clean cut young men. I am none of those things, Brent. So I, I apologize here that we probably lost a, a viewer if you ever did watch in the first place. Yeah, we did. We lost that guy. <laughs> yeah. He is not watching Action yeah. Sports Jacks on ESPN. Unfortunately. He's probably not listening either, but no. he's definitely not watching. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very well said. All right. Uh, Hey, we'll get back to football tomorrow. Really a, a kind of a quiet day around the Jaguars. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing we did not mention, and we can't go a three-hour show without, is Jalen Ramsey. Yeah. And very quiet on that front. Doug Marone, remember, said that he should learn more last night. So mm -hmm. the Jaguars know more about the back specialist and what happened there in Houston. Uh, so that's the most critical thing now that goes into tomorrow, is what will Doug Marone say? Where will Jalen Ramsey be? Will he yep. be in Jacksonville, be in that locker room, be on the practice field? What's the next step in all of this from a football standpoint? You know, we talked yesterday a lot about the sideshow, uh, about the charade that this has kind of become, about the picture with Deshaun Watson. I think as we enter Wednesdays now, and I thought this last week too, that this is less about the sideshow and more about, okay, what's happening with the football team. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow it's an important day because this team plays Michael Thomas, who is a really good wide receiver. And it would be nice to have Jalen Ramsey healthy and ready and willing to play football on Sunday. So I think tomorrow is a big day when it comes to Jalen Ramsey. And then, you know, maybe we get the sideshow back on Thursday when he sits down for a podcast with uh, Nate Burleson. Who knows? Maybe he'll say something that, that will capture headlines again. We don't know that part of it. But I think this is all football related going forward tomorrow when it comes to Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, and you're absolutely right here, Brent, because this is a Saints team. And granted, Drew Brees is not playing in this game. Their backup Teddy Bridgewater is. But Teddy Bridgewater has been serviceable. And if you're looking at the Saints roster right now, I mean, I can't think of too many teams that have pro bowlers on their team on, on all three levels on offense from last year. You know, whether it's tight end and Jared Cook, who's very capable, obviously a pro bowler, and Michael Thomas, who's one of the best wide receivers going right now in the NFL. And then a very capable, um, very Christian McCaffrey-esque Alvin Kamara, who, who can beat you in a number of ways. Uh, so Jalen Ramsey, you know, keeping track of him, of if he's going to be kind of shifting towards the, you know, towards the point of playing, it's going to be very important because if you can shut down Michael Thomas and at least say, hey, Jalen, you got to cover Michael Thomas, at least you can shut down one of those weapons and then you can focus on Alvin Kamara. Then you can focus on Jared Cook. Then you can focus on Taysom Hill. We haven't talked about Taysom Hill yet either. Yeah. You know, then th th this is a gadget guy who uh, he, he commands respect and he commands game planning. So we have a lot to talk about these next couple of days uh, for the Jaguars to get ready for the Saints coming in here. I want you to think about this tomorrow, okay? Uh, a little homework for you. Okay. What worries you more about the Saints? Their offense right now or their defense? And it's a good call. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, because I'm a little conflicted. I'm going to think about it myself. And it's don't think it's as simple as just saying the offense because the Jags defense didn't play well last week or the offense because this is Sean Payton and, and even it was a Drew Brees offense. Uh, they're a good football team all around. Think about that defense a little bit for the Saints. Do a little homework, people. <laughs> and then uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow here on the show. Uh, big thanks to everybody for making this happen. All you guys' work back there and Nick and Coos and Scott and getting this set up. Stuart Weber here did a great job. The folks at Brandon High School have been awesome. They had the kids come out earlier. You can check out the show earlier. They've got a, a ninth grade game going on. The football team allowed us to be here while they practiced. Gardner Minshew's dad, Flint. Wyatt Rogers, football coach. Uh, Brian Marshall, the principal here. This has been a really fun day. We'll do it again tomorrow. We're going to hang in Brandon, Mississippi for another day. And I'll see you on TV tonight, CBS 47 and Fox 30. Minshew Mania on Action Sports Jacks on ESPN 690. Thanks for hanging with us. This is Golik and Wingo. Here is <laughs> Will Kane, ladies and gentlemen. Jerry Jones meant nothing. It's quite clearly a joke. Can we not try to use victimhood as our ace of spades in the ultimate card game of life? You know what this is? Rocky Arsenal using something to negotiate. Yeah. It's not victimhood. It's not a plague sweeping society. It's okay, you said something, and I'm going to use it to my advantage. That's it. Golik and Wingo, weekday mornings at 6 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN2. This message is sponsored.